Shannon Savoy is the CEO of Nog Free Living LLC. She is an army veteran of 23 years and now serves in the Army of the Lord. She is a trauma-informed narcissist abuse recovery coach and a powerful, dynamic, Holy Spirit-led speaker. Shannon is a survivor of domestic violence and an advocate against abuse. Shannon emboldens others to break the chains of abuse through empowerment, edification, and education. She helps others achieve their healing goals by introducing healthy coping skills, biblical, and practical strategies. Shannon formed Chainbreaker University designed to turn wounded victims into warriors. Not Free Living is a ministry, coaching, and brand committed to dismantling and disrupting narcissistic and demonic systems through exhortation, edification, education, and God's Word. Follow at Not Free Living on YouTube and all social media outlets for in-depth teachings. Let's break those chains. Visit www.notfreeliving.com for more information. Let's get ready to break those chains. Good morning, fam. How y'all doing? Hallelujah. We made it. We made it. Hello. Um, Anna was in here earlier. I'm going to address your comment. Yes, I am. I'm going to address your comment because it needs addressing. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about that today. Okay. Good morning, Lucille. Shabbat Shalom. Yes. Okay, Melissa. I need to hear the word and heal from narcissist abuse. You're in the right place. You're in the right place. You're in the right space. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. You're in the right space, Melissa. Hello, husband. Uh, don't forget to follow my husband, Faith Based Workplace. All right. Uh, let me put up his information. I might as well go ahead and put it in here because we got to get in here and get out of here today. All right. God bless you, husband. This is his information, y'all. Subscribe to his channel um, on YouTube on TikTok. I mean, he is doing amazing things. God is taking him to another level. Uh, and he, you know, we co-labor together. He's equipping the saints. All right. So follow him over there. God bless you, husband. And while you're in here, don't forget to share, um, to hit that like button. All right. Sometimes people forget, hit that like button. Okay. All right. So welcome everyone. Welcome chain breakers. Welcome to the VIPs who support the channel. Um, every month, um, those who sow into this ministry, of course, you don't have to do that, right? But you do it, and I appreciate it, all right? And may every seed that you sow here know that you are sowing on fertile ground. Hallelujah. Hello, Prophetess Nene. Nene um, started doing my thumbnails. Let, let me show. Do I have? Let me see. Let me see. She did this one, what we're talking about today. That is Nene, all right? Um, uh, yes, yeah, she does an awesome job. Doesn't she look, look at that? Look at that. Look at your work, girl. Look at your work, girlfriend. All right, God bless you. All right, uh, hello, Coach Natisha. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I know I think it was last week. I'm late, but it's the way we still on time, right? All right. Hello, Violet. God bless you. God bless you all. Hello. Another one. I, know, I need my microphone. Where's my mic? Let me get my maracas. I don't got my microphone. Where's my? All right. Prophet Quenisha delivered a fire message last night. All right. Um, a deliverance message. Okay. The Holy Spirit was on her heavy last night. It was an awesome message. Support her channel as well. All right. If you need prophetic uh, healing and deliverance, um, she also has fast every month. Listen, it's here. It's here. It's here. All right. It's here. Good morning, Donna Real Estate. Hello. Hello, my fellow realtor. God bless you. 
Hello, Purple Crown. Hey, Trucker for Life. I saw you last night in Quenisha's uh, live. Hello, Fruit Inspector. Hello, good morning. Good morning to my sister, Arne. Hey, 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 hey. I sound like Fat Albert, don't I? Hey, 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 it's Fat Albert. Um, Y'all don't mind me. Don't, don't, don't even. Don't even mind me, okay? These things just come into my head and, and it just comes out. All right. Hello, Joe. Hello, Nandy. Shabbat shalom to you. Yes, indeed. Yes. Hello, our CBU fam. Hello, Q. Hello for those who come from TikTok and different places. I truly appreciate you being here. Hello, BB. Hello, Symphony. Hey, lyricists. Hope all is well with you as well. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hey, Mindy Mahogany. God bless you. Listening and cleaning, cleaning and listening. All right. Get it in. Yes. Keep your listen. Keep your houses clean, women and men. All right. Keep your houses clean. Hello, Ashley Brown. All right. Uh, hello. I'm just going to call you Z. Okay. Good morning. Oh, you streaming live on TikTok? Hey, TikTok fam. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Put Look, let us know where you're coming from. Where you where you're joining from? All right. Where are you joining from? Good morning. Al you at the gym, Allie? Listen, girl, I got my workout in before the live stream. Yes, I did. I, I closed the ring. If you have a um an Apple Watch, like it has rings, all right? And I closed my ring with my 30 minutes of walking. Let me see how many steps I'm at so far. How many steps y'all got so far? Let me see. It's 11 o'clock. I am at 5,053. Not bad for 11 a.m. Not bad. So that means I should hit, I should hit about 12,000 today. Right? Right? Yes. Okay, good. God bless you. Hello, royalty. God bless you. All right, y'all. Those of you who are coming in. Hello, Esther. She did amazing. You was in there. You was in there, right? She did amazing. Hello, Melissa. Okay, Tennessee. All right, we got Georgia. We got Tennessee. All right, and then I'm going to get right into this. Good morning, Valerie. Uh, we got Tennessee. We got UK. Okay, you at 3,000. That's pretty good for 11 o'clock. Okay. Okay, let me, uh, I forgot to uh, close out my workout. Okay, she said workout paused. I didn't close um, out my workout. Yes, get that workout in. We're doing the chain breaker challenge, okay? If we started December 26th, all right? Well, I was trying to get y'all right before the new year, all right? To so start those healthy habits um, before the new year. So let me see. Let me see. We about to get started. I know some of y'all like, why is she talking? Because we have a community here. That's why I talk, all right? Um, so this is the um, challenge. Let me move my banner. All right. So, and it's just eight to 10,000 steps, four to five uh, times a week. All right. If you can't do that, move your arms, move whatever, whatever you can move, just move something. All right. Move something. We listen, these are our vessels. Don't you know, if you're in deliverance, you got to have stamina. You got to be built for this. All right. So we got to get rid of gluttony. We got to get rid of, we don't like to talk about that demon, do we? We don't like to talk about gluttony. Gluttony, do we? We got to, we got to talk about it all. All right. So we got to be built for that. And we have to maintain our temples. Part of deliverance is maintaining your temple, your God given temple. All right. All right. All right. UK, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. All right. Ohio. Hello, Leanne. All right, y'all, y'all coming in from everywhere. Yes, Texas, UK in the building. All right, New Jersey, new here. Thank you, Juliana, for being here. New Jersey. Okay, okay. All right. All right, y'all. Y'all coming in from all over. Praise God. All right. So today, y'all, we are talking about how narcissists keep you from your kingdom spouse. How many of you know that's what the narcissist's goal is? That's one of their goals is to keep you from your kingdom spouse. Oh, let me say this before we get started, all right? I'm gonna go in prayer. All right, um, right after, well, not right after this, but at 3 p.m., um, Solomon and I uh, had a conversation uh, on narcissists in the family, church, and workplace. It's a 45-minute video premiere and live chat just like this is, so you can come in there, share your comments. Uh, we talk about um, we talk about uh, signs of a narcissistic family. We talk about uh, recommendations, you know, when you're going uh, into church or if you're in church, signs to look out for. We talk about uh, we talked about uh, the Cat Williams. We just pulled things from there. We talked about uh, TV Joshua. Um, we talked about um, who else? Little Nas X and some other topics and just things that if you're in the kingdom that you should be uh, aware of. OK, so. 
that that will premiere at 3 p.m. CST. That's 4 p.m. Um, EST. All right. That is 1 p.m. All right. Uh, PST. OK. And I don't know what time it is in the UK. All right. But uh, you can join us for that conversation. And I think it's going to be something um, something that you all enjoy. And we just want to hear uh, your comments on on topics that are happening around the world and what it means. We, uh, as I always say, I don't talk about things for sensationalism. We talk about it to glean the lessons that we can learn. All right. As the body, as the ecclesia. All right. So today we are talking about how narcissists keep you from your God given spouse. OK. Uh, and I was one that was in a demonic covenant. So God leads you out of those things so that now you can go back and help somebody else out uh, of those situations. And that's what we do here. All right. So we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about signs of a counterfeit. We're going to talk about signs of a demonic covenant. We're going to talk about signs of a kingdom marriage. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about boundaries and how trauma can keep you from your God given spouse if you don't do the work. All right. After you get out. OK. And then we're going to talk about when you should not date or, or marry. OK. Uh, we're going to talk about how narcissists keep you from your God given spouse. We're going to talk about God's designs for marriage. And we're going to talk about practical and spiritual things that you can do to recover in Christ. You're in the right place. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bring this day under your under your uh, submission, Heavenly Father. Lord, we command the elements, Lord, to come into alignment, Lord, anywhere where there is manipulation of the inner of the internet, of the airways, Heavenly Father, we speak to it and we bind up every form of witchcraft, sorcery, divination in the mighty name of Jesus. We come in the authority of Yeshua HaMashiach and we are called to take dominion. That means we're called to take dominion over the airways. That means we're called to take dominion in our family. That means we're called to take dominion in our neighborhoods and in our communities. We're called to take dominion over territories and regions and nations, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we take dominion, Lord. We ask that you dispatch your angels angels, Lord, in the heavenly realms. Your word says, don't you know that I can call on a legion of angels? So Lord, we call on a legion of angels according to your word, heavenly father. We call on a legion of angels, Lord, to, to, uh, to protect the airwaves, Lord, from any backlash and retaliation, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray against Jezebel, who may be trying to keep someone from listening to this message, Lord. Lord, may the truth go forward, heavenly father. Lord, reduce all of me, Lord, so that you can hear from, so that we can hear from you, Heavenly Father. Lord, incline my ear to your ear. Lord, incline my eyesight to your eyesight. Lord, give us 2020 in the realm of the spirit, Lord. Increase our discernment, Lord, especially in these last days, Lord, because you said many, many wolves have gone out, Heavenly Father, but your word says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not answer, Lord. We will not hearken unto the word, into the voice of Jezebel any longer, Lord. We will not hearken to the voice of witchcraft and, and Ahab any longer. We will not hearken to the voice of codependency and lack and stagnation and poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, your word says that we are called to be more than conquerors, Lord, and we are more than conquerors when we are in Christ Jesus, Lord. So, Lord, incline my mouth to your mouth, Heavenly Father. Give me the utterance, Lord. Give me the words to say, Lord, that will help break the chains, Heavenly Father. Your word says, Lord, that I have been anointed to teach, to set the cap captives free. I've been anointed to teach, Lord, to proclaim liberty to those who are bound. And today we came to set somebody free. We came to set people free. We come on a rescue mission from the kingdom of heaven to release people from the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get their rescue papers on today. Somebody's going to get their freedom papers in the realm of the spirit on today. Hallelujah, Lord. So we pray, Lord, that the chains, that the chains be broken off of our minds, off of our bodies, off of our spirit, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We declare freedom over them, Lord. Freedom, Heavenly Father. The Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of darkness. May every form of darkness, Lord, be be uh, be shattered, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. May your ecclesia begin to rise up, Lord. May every prophet, may every fivefold minister, Heavenly Father, begin to rise up, Lord, and their God-given a power and God-given authority, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're 
going to do here today. We come with great expectation, Lord, of what you're going to do here today. We come with great expectation that lives will be changed, Lord. This is not just getting up on YouTube, Lord. This is ministry, Lord. This is setting captives free, Lord. This is giving utterance, Lord, to those who have an ear to hear, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this Shabbat, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are a healer, Lord, for those who need healing, Heavenly Father. You are Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Alpha, the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are Elohim. You are Yahweh. You are Adonai, Heavenly Father. There is nothing, Lord, I searched all over and I couldn't find nobody like you. If you're searching for healing, you're in the right place because there's a bomb in Gilead. If you need deliverance, you're in the right place. Hallelujah. Don't you know that deliverance also comes through word of knowledge? You don't always got to be foaming at the mouth to be delivered. Hallelujah. Deliverance also comes through word of knowledge, through hearing the word of God, illuminating light where there was once darkness. Lord, let the light of Christ shine upon your people, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do here today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it's already been done, Lord. We thank you that our names are sealed in the Lamb's book of life, Lord. We repent, Heavenly Father, for disobedience, Lord. We repent, Heavenly Father, for not for walking in rebellion. We repent, Lord, for walking in passivity and, and timidity, Heavenly Father. Lord, you said the righteous are as bold as a lion. I speak boldness over you. May you be prophetically activated in the realm. May you receive the grace for boldness. May you receive the grace that you need to fulfill your calling. May you receive the grace for the prophetic. May you receive the grace for, for tongues. May you receive the grace for fire. May you receive the grace of God upon your life. Hallelujah. May you receive the grace and the anointing that is needed to fulfill your calling. Let it fall down fresh on you. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that these people are being activated, Lord, in the realm of the Spirit and those who are already activated. You're going to new levels. Glory be to God. You're going to new levels because you come out of demonic covenants. Hallelujah. You come out of demonic covenants. You make God your God. Hallelujah. So Lord, for those who are in, in position, Lord, get them ready. Hallelujah. Some of you need to get ready for the prophecy, for the words that have been pro uh, prophesied over your life. Hallelujah. That have been confirmed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Like I said the other day, you have to be in position for the promises of the prophecy. So you can hear a prophecy, but if you're not in position, if you're not where God has, has positioned you to be, you can miss your calling. You can miss your destination. Hallelujah. But those under the sound of my voice who are ready to go to the next level, we're going on higher. We're going on higher in the Lord. We're going deeper in the Lord. God is giving us deeper revelation of who he is, but you got to go into the deep. You got to go deeper. We're no more surface level, no more playing pity pat with the devil. And for those who are in these demonic covenants, Lord, we pray that you give them revelation, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. May the scales be removed from their eyes, Lord. And for those who are ready to come out, Lord, may they have the financial provision, Heavenly Father. May they have more than the financial provisions. You need faith. More than the financial provisions, you need to know that your God is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a strong tower. He will be your He will be your God in the time of need. Hallelujah. He is an on-time God. He is never slack in his promises. Glory be to God. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the release, Lord. We thank you. I hear chains falling, my God. I hear chains falling. I hear captives being set free already, and we ain't even gotten to the message good. I hear chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling already. I hear revelation being made already. I hear the sound of freedom already. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of praise already. Some of you better praise God for where you're going next. You might as well. You might as well praise him. You might as well praise him. You might as well praise him for your next level. You might as well praise him for what's happening in your life. You might as well praise him. Don't you know praise changes the atmosphere, my God. Change, cha praise changes your situation, my God. Your enemy will look at you and wonder how you're still praising him. Your enemy will look at you and wonder
wonder how we wonder how God made you a sign in a wonder. God, make me your sign in your wonder. Let me, Lord, let me be, let me carry your glory, Lord. Let these people that are already in position, Lord, let them carry your glory. Don't you know you were made to be glory carriers? Hallelujah. And you can't carry the glory of God when you're in covenant with Jezebel. My God, Lord, give them revelation, Lord, that you can't be in a three court strand with God and Jezebel. You can't be in a three court strand with God and Satan. Glory be to God. So, Lord, I hear chains falling. I hear shackles coming off of their feet, Heavenly Father. Lord, for everybody that is bound, Lord, that is ready to come out, Lord, let the jail cells break open just like you did for Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. My God, my God, my God is a way maker, a miracle worker. He's a strong tower. He's your refuge. He's our cover. Hallelujah. He is everything. He is our shield and rampart. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endured to all generations. My God, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We come in great expectation, Lord. Let me not speak in error, Heavenly Father. I bind up every spirit of error, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And thank you thank you for using me as your vessel, as your servant. That's all I am. I'm just a servant, Heavenly Father. I just come to serve. Do you come to serve? Son of man didn't come, didn't come to, to be served. He came to serve. And that's the same thing with you. You're called to serve. You're called to stand out. You're called to be bold. You're called to be radical. You're called to be righteous. You're called to be peculiar people. Stop trying to fit in where God has told you to break out of. It's time to break out of the prison cells. It's time to break out. It's time, those of you who are ready, it's time the jail cells will be opening. My God, hallelujah. So we stand in faith and we stand with you. We stand with those who are broken hearted, Lord. Heal their wounds, Lord. Your word says that you love love the brokenhearted and you bind up every one of their wounds, Lord. May their wounds be broken, Lord. We know what it is to be brokenhearted, but I also know what it is to have a healer. What's a little broken heart when I know a healer? What's a little adversity when I know the one who brings me through? What's a little warfare when I know my God is a warrior? What's a little, what is it, what is it? What's a narcissist when you're a Jehu in the realm of the spirit, my God? What's a Jezebel to an Elijah? my God. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we're rising up, that your remnant is rising up, Lord. And we pray for those who are being abused, Lord. We pray for those who have not yet found their voice, Lord. Let them find their voice. Let you be prophetically activated right now. Hallelujah. I declare by the word of God that you will find your voice. Hallelujah. That everywhere that Jezebel sent you a fiery dart, just like she did Elijah, I decree by the word of God, God said, why are you here? Why are some of you here? Why are you here? Why are you here, Elijah? Why are you here? Why are you still there in the wilderness when God has called you out? Hallelujah. Why are you still sitting in that mess when God has called you out? Why are you here? So God, Lord, pull them out. I declare boldness over them. I declare, Lord, that timidity and passivity and codependency will die by fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. It is so, and it is risen. It is written. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My God, my God, my God is a strong tower. He is a miracle worker. He is light in the new day. Hallelujah. My God can do anything but fail. All I did was trust God with my life. Do you understand me? That's all I do. All I am is obedient to God's word. If you want to know how to be successful, be obedient. If you want to know how God can use you, listen, be a ruler over the little before you can be a, be a good steward over little before you can be a ruler over more. Go where God tells you to do. And don't you let no Jezebel don't you let no narcissists, don't you let anybody stop you from fulfilling God's calling on your life. Do you understand me? Ain't no devil in hell can stop me. Ain't no devil, ain't no narcissist, ain't no witch can stop me when my God is for me. Who dare be against me? You come against me and I come in the power and authority of Yeshua HaMashiach, you're going to run up into a brick wall. I've seen people's lives crumble by speaking, trying to speak a curse over me. Every curse that you speak over me will return 
return back to you. Do you understand how that works? Hallelujah. So this is why you got to be careful. You can't put your mouth on everybody. Do you understand me? Because some of us are in covenant with God for real. Some of us ain't playing about our God. My, I don't know about you, but my God don't play about me. When God said that my mother and father forsake me, he will take me in. He's taken me in and he's my Abba father and I'm the apple of his eye and he don't play about me. He don't play about you when you're in covenant with him. He don't play about you when you're in covenant with him, but you got to come out of those demonic covenants. You got to come out of that stuff. You got to come up out of it. Do you understand me? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let me get it. I ain't messing with y'all today. I ain't messing with y'all. I ain't messing with y'all. I ain't going to keep you, like I said, on Solomon's Live. If you haven't watched Solomon's live stream from Wednesday, man, do yourself a solid and go watch it. My God, my God, it's powerful, okay? All right, it's powerful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for being here. All right, let's get into this word. All right, one of our, our, our core scriptures for today, you, you have your Bibles, open up your phones, open up your phones. This is Bible study because I don't want you to take my word for it. I don't, you should never sit in front of somebody and just take their word from it for it. Do you understand me? When I we put, uh, uh, speak the scripture, you should be pulling that up on your Bible app. Do you understand? Pull it up or pull out your hard Bible. All right, so one of our scriptures is Genesis 2. 18, 21, and 24. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper. I will make a suitable helper for him. So the Lord God calls man to fall into a deep slumber, into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took off one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. All right. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. And the man said, now this is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. And that is why a man leaves his father and is united with his wife and the two become one flesh. Do you understand me? That's God's design for marriage. That's not God's design for people who are still playing house by fire. Nicole Hay says, by fire. Hallelujah. That's God's design for marriage. All right. That's God's design. All right. So when we come together, we understand that relationships are spiritual. They are spiritual first. All right. So what do you think the most important decision? I want this is interactive. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. What do you think the most important decision that you will ever make in your life is? All right. Is it buying a car? Is it buying a home? Is it is it your career choice? Because that's what the world will tell you. And all of those things are important. All right. But in the kingdom, marriage and relationships can make you or break you. Do you understand me? All right. So who you date and who you marry is the most important decision you will make. I, I think so. All right. Well, one of the, I guess the important, most important is your salvation is who you're going to serve. And then after that, all right, it's marriage. It's marriage, right? When God put Adam and Eve, he gave, he gave Adam a job. He gave him dominion, right? And then he gave him a helper. That's God's design. So who you marry and who you co-mingle and who you allow to have access to you is very important. All right. So it has the power to make you or break you. But marriage and dating and courting is something that people do superficially. Do you understand me? It's something that people do emotionally and sexually. So can you imagine how unwise it is? And I've been there. I ain't always been saved. I ain't always been born again. But do you know how unwise it is to date or marry someone because they are pretty or they are handsome? Do you know how, how shallow it is to date someone off of physicality only? Do you know how unwise and unscriptural it is to marry someone all right, just because just because you're attracted to them. Do you know? And even you have to be careful. You can't just marry someone just because you love them. That's what the world says. 
So you also should not marry because you have a trauma bond with this person. All right. So I want you to really think about that. I want you to think about how the world tells you to date and find a mate. All right. I want you to really think about this. So do you know that there are people in, in the year of our Lord 2024, there are still people that are dating and marrying people solely off the fact that they have sexual attraction to the person because they put it down in the bedroom. I mean, I, 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 like what? And this year, in 2024, we still have people demonically soul tied to people because they look nice on the outside because they put it down in the bedroom. Do you understand me? All right. And I'm not saying that those aren't important factors, but they cannot be the foundation of a relationship. No, those are foundations of a situationship. If you want a situationship, date, date, date uh, vertically. All right. Where is it horizontally? Date horizontally if, if you want to find yourself in the shallow pond. If you want to find your situ yourself in a situationship. If you want to find yourself in a narcissistic covenant. Keep dating horizontally. All right. If you want to find yourself so tied to one of uh, a spawn of Satan, Keep dating the world's way. Good afternoon, brother. How you doing? It's good to see you. I have, I look, I forgot to take a picture. I bought one of your sweatshirts. All right. Harrison has a channel. He has, he has um, awesome uh, content over there. Um, a couple of my, the one video I did a couple of weeks ago, I showed his, his clip with Tony Gaskins in or the thumbnail. All right. Thank you, brother, for being here. All right. God bless you. All right. All right. So those cannot be the foundation of your relationship. All right, so let's discuss, can't stop us, can't stop us, won't stop, can't stop, all right? So let's discuss signs of a counterfeit, all right? Do you know the signs of a counterfeit? Because we got to know, because a lot of times we were blinded, we were bewitched, we were under deception, we just didn't know what we didn't know, right? So narcissists are pretenders, they are decepticons, and we have to be able to discern the real from the fake, we have to be able to discern truth from a lie. And when, we, when we're when we unawakened, we don't know. We, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know. I didn't know. All right. So it's important that we recognize and that you know that you and I both know God for ourselves. And we know the word of God so that you are able to recognize a wolf in sheep's clothing. So you have to establish boundaries for yourself. You have to love yourself. Do you understand me? When I got out of abuse, I realized I did not love myself. Do you understand me? I had a form. I thought I had love for myself. But when I look back on it, you can always tell. Let me, I'm, listen, let me give you a cheat code. You can always tell how people think by the choices that they make. So people can tell me, I do this for a living, right? People tell me things all day long, all day long. But I'm not listening to what you say. I'm discerning the spirit that is behind what you say. Do you understand me? I'm discerning and I'm I'm listening. I, I'm, I'm looking by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm looking at your life choices. I'm looking at my life choices. Your life choices are a result your, where you are today is a result of how you feel about yourself. It's a result of how you, how much you love yourself. And when you have boundaries, when you, when you love yourself, you will establish boundaries. When you love yourself, you will establish a framework for how you should be loved and how you should be treated. And it will be in alignment with God's word. But when you don't know yourself and you don't know your identity, you'll find yourself in a narcissistic covenant. So when I didn't love myself, I found myself with a spawn of Satan, all right? And I realized that I could not re recognize the counterfeit because at that time, I didn't truly know God. I had a form of godliness. I had religion, all right? So when you don't know God for real, all right? And now some people can, can know God and they can be in error. They can be deceived, all right? But it won't be too long because God going to tell you. 
All right. But I realize people cannot recognize the counterfeit because they don't know God. And when you don't know God, you'll fall for a spot of Satan. And sometimes people don't really want to believe what is right in front of them. The truth is too hard. I'm a truth teller. Do you understand me? I don't care what it is. I want to know the truth. All right. But some people, the truth is too hard for them to be able to recognize. So then they go into cognitive dissonance. Cognitive, cognitive dissonance is just another word for being double minded. Your mind is at battle with itself. If your mind is at battle with what you know, what the Holy Spirit has told you, what you have discerned and and it's uh what you what you you know who you love so a lot of people come to me and they they their parent may be a narcissist or whatever i'm not here to discern narcissists i discern spirits right but a lot of times they're not yet willing to say what call a thing a thing and when you're not ready to call a thing a thing you stay bound by a lie anytime you're not ready to tell the truth god bless you stacy Anytime you're not ready to tell the truth, the lie is going to be what keeps you bound. So you have to be able to tell yourself the truth in order to break out of a situation, in order to break curses. You have to be able to tell yourself some hard truths. The truth will truly set you free. All right. So if you don't know what God, who God is, and you don't know what love really is, you won't recognize it and we'll fall for the counterfeit. We won't fall for the counterfeit anymore. All right. All right. So you, and then if love comes to you, you won't even appreciate it. So you must know God and you must know that God is love, right? Then you will be able to recognize the truth from a lie then you will be able to recognize a wolf from a sheep all right so when you're in a romantic relationship narcissists follow very distinct patterns all right or they it's the same spirit so if you if we all told about you know our experiences here we would see that all of our stories have similar commonalities even though we're different people from different walks, some of you from the UK, some of you are from Maryland, some of you are from Tennessee, some of you are from Texas, some of you from Asia, all right? Some of you are from Australia, but all of us here either know about it or you're here to support or whatever it is. But if you've been through abuse, there are similar commonalities that we all have been through, even though we're different people. Do you understand me? Because it's the same spirit. Have you ever wondered, how how do narcissists all follow the same pattern more or less because it's the same spirit which produces the same mindset it's not a psychological disorder first it's a spiritual issue that affects the psychological it affects the physiological all right because it's spirit all right. So when you're with the narcissist, you're going to see if, this, if we're talking about romantic. All right. We'll talk about family a little bit. All right. Or it could be friendships. It could be partnerships. All right. So when you're with the narcissist, the first few days, the first few weeks. All right. It feels like you're on cloud nine. All right. It feels like you're on cloud nine. It's love bombing. It's, you know, it feels like you met your soulmate. Ain't no soulmates. Do you understand me? You feel like you met your soulmate. All right. They may, you know, pull out all the stops and you feel like you've entered into, you know, just a fairy tale. You feel like Julia Roberts on Pretty Woman. You feel like, oh, my goodness, if you're a man, you feel like you met you met your good thing. All right. And all you want to do, all you do is think about them. My God, all you do is think about them. So you become you come you become you become consumed with them. All right. All right. And then this this honeymoon phase, you know, it, it makes you feel infatuated with that person. They're all that you can think about. But people don't know what you're what we're really getting into with these situations. Do you understand me? They really don't understand what they're getting into. All right. So this love bombing period, it gives you like a sense of euphoria. 
Oh, you feel like you're on cloud nine. All right. But when the love bombing stopped, then what happened? What happens after the love bombing? All right. Then comes the devalue. Then comes playing the, the game playing. Then comes the light, the gas lighting. All right. Then comes the ups and downs. All right. So narcissists, when you meet them, they hide who they are. And this is why nobody enters a, a not, not, well, I can't say nobody, but most people don't enter a narcissistic relationship on purpose. We enter them because of unhealed trauma in us, unhealed desires in us, and because the person is a full-blown liar. Do you understand me? All right. It's a full blown, full blown liar. So let me see which one. So how do you know you're in a narcissistic relationship? Let's, let's walk this thing out. Right. All right. Signs of a counterfeit. Okay. Let's walk this out. Are you, so if you're, if this is you, or if this has been you, you know, put a hand and put put something in the, in the comments, a hand or something. So you don't know what they want. You feel confused. You feel inferior to them. You know, narcissists make you feel like you're stupid. Okay? Like you're not that smart. That's why people people walk around with a spirit of rejection on them because they still have the thoughts of the narcissist in their head. The narcissist begins to project who they are onto you. Narcissists feel inferior. You shouldn't. All right? You begin to question your own reality. How many of you have questioned... Man, is it just me? Is it me? Man, I, I feel like I'm going crazy. All right, we got some flames in the chat. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're always apologizing. You always have to be the bigger person. Okay? And they may even give you a faux apology, a fake apology, but they don't mean it. The best apology is change behavior. All right. They know how to read you. A narcissist knows how to read you better than you know yourself because because you don't know yourself, but they know human behavior. That's why you got to know it, too. All right. You're afraid of them. You're afraid to share your thoughts. You're afraid that they may unalive themselves. You're afraid. You're afraid to leave. You're afraid to stay. You're afraid. You should not feel that in a relationship. And this can be parental. It could be, you know, a child. It could be any of that. All right. You never know what kind of mood they are in. So this is where we learn to walk on eggshells. This is where we learn where our empathy kicks it to another level. Because now you got to be able to read. You got to be able to discern like the footsteps as they come in the house. Or was that just me? You got to be able to navigate the landmines and the bombs that they throw at you. Or was that just me? All right. You feel controlled. My narcissists, a lot of people are in narcissistic marriages and relationships because of control, because of finances. You can't, you can't even buy a pair of panties without somebody breathing down your neck. You can't even, you, you, you go to work and you got to give your check to somebody else. Now, if that's the plan and you both agree and you're, you're doing it because you have financial goals. That's one thing. That that's one thing. Do you understand me? But you work and then somebody takes your money. What, what is this? What, what, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? All right. But narcissists like to keep you in financial uh, straits so that they can control you. We're going to talk about that. We're going to break that down a little bit more. But you got to know that there's a way maker. Don't, don't give up hope. There's a way maker. All right. Uh, the sex is strange. Strange things for a piece of change. People do strange things for a piece of change. People do strange things when they're in relationships with a narcissist. All right. Strange things. I've seen people who weren't even thinking about polygamy. Now the narcissist got you swinging, you know, three ways from Sunday. Now the narcissist got you bringing people into your bedroom. Now the narcissist got you into sodomy. Now the narcissist got you, you know, bringing men and women doing all kinds of things. All right. Strange things for a piece of change. And when you have sex with a narcissist, it feels it, it's like a performance. They don't love you. 
Love, ain't no love in that. They're using your body as a toilet. They're using your body as a form of release, man or woman. There are somatic women that do the same thing. A lot of men have been bewitched by a narcissistic Jezebel, Delilah, uh, succubus, incubus spirit. Do you understand me? A lot of our men are bewitched right now because of a big booty and a smile or big boobs and a smile. Do you understand me? And they don't know how they got here. They just know they can't shake her. I can't shake her. It's like crack. She like crack. And crack is whack. Do you understand? In the words of Whitney Houston, crack is whack. Do you understand me? So a lot of people, that's right, they are spellbound. They are spellbound. They are under a spell. They are under a binding spell. They are under witchcraft because that's what narcissists do. Love bombing is witchcraft. Do you understand me? Narcissists work in the realm of witchcraft. Jezebel was a whole witch. Do you understand me? So anytime you're in a narcissistic relationship, you're dealing with witchcraft. You're dealing with mind control. You're dealing with an octopus spirit, which is why it makes it so hard for you to leave. You don't just leave a narcissistic relationship. You might have walked over, but you're going to limp back. Do you understand me? You don't just you don't just walk away. Ain't nothing normal about a narcissistic relationship. Nothing. And from the onset, nothing is normal. Nothing is normal in the relationship and nothing is normal with the breakup. Do you understand me? That's right, um, Pastor Ezra. It is, it is, it's, it's wickedness. All right. So according to the DSM-5, all right, we study this thing psychologically and spiritually. Narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, is a disorder that is characterized by an exaggeration of self-importance, a desire for excessive uh, attention or admiration, and a lack of empathy for other people. All right. Oh, thank you, husband. All praises to the most high. All glory to God. We want this word out. We want people set free. Hallelujah. Thank you, husband. All right. So when people have MPD, what the world calls MPD, they have a grandiose view of themselves and believes that they are superior to others. They have high or low empathy or no empathy. This is why they can do what they do. You know, you you I know when I was going through this a lot, I was like, how can somebody who says they love me treat me like this? It, it, it did not make sense. And it won't make sense because you can't assign logic. So what is illogical? That's right. That's why you got to have God as your as your as your provider. It's the only way. All right, all right. So um, the DSM uh, says about narcissistic personality disorder. Um, it's one of the ten personality disorders recognized by mental health professionals and the Diagnostic and, and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. In the spiritual realm, we know that this is the spirit of Jezebel amongst a legion of others. When you're dealing with a narcissist, you're not just dealing with one spirit. And spirits, what do spirits do? Spirits transfer. This is why you feel discombobulated. You feel weak. You start to, some people have lost their hair. Some people have, look at people who are in narcissistic relationships. They strung out. You be stressed out, anxious. This is why our, our central nervous system, when we get out, a lot of times we'll rest a lot. You got to sleep because now your body has to heal itself. God has to heal you and take you through the wilderness to heal you and to regulate your emotions, to heal you and regulate your central nervous system, to heal you and regulate your cortisol levels that have been through the roof for years and years as you've gone through this. All right. And then narcissists, they, they'll even go to therapy with you. They don't want help. And they don't change. People will say, oh, yeah, God can do anything. God can absolutely do anything. But what God does not do is go against people's free will. God changes and helps those who want to be changed, who want to be in covenant with him. And a narcissist, they don't want to be in covenant with God. They want to be your God. All right. Jezebel did not want God. Jezebel's, Jezebel did not repent. 
Ahab repented. Jezebels don't repent. You understand me? So narcissists don't change. Narcissists modify their behavior. That's what they're, they're behavior modification specialists. So when you're at church, they modify their behavior to fit in because they're chameleons. They're shapeshifters. This is why you see the their black eyes. The Bible said that the, the, the your eyes are, they're like a window into your soul. And if your, your eyes be dark, that, that shows what's in your whole body. When you see a narcissist's eyes turn black, you better get your hat, your coat, and get to high stepping up out of there. So you messing with a you on you messing with demons on another level that most of the time you're not even equipped to battle. So when you see a narcissist's eyes go black, that is indicative of what is inside of them. And that thing ain't, ain't manifesting to love on you. It's manifesting to destroy you, to show itself. Do you understand me? Because that's what demons do. Demons are, are um, they're cowards at the same time, but they like to show, a, a, like show force. So when somebody manifests those black or those red eyes, they're showing you, they're giving you a peek of what's in their soul. And that's not for you to try to fix. You can't fix a narcissist, honey. You can't fix a narcissist, brother. That's not, that's out of your scope. That's Jesus work. And that's if they want to be fixed. It's not your job to try to stay with a narcissist to try to fix them. That's out of your scope. Do you understand me? It's not our job to be rehab center, centers for broken men and broken women. That's God's job. And do you understand me? All right. So many people get stuck in narcissist relationships because they're trauma bonded and soul tied. And that's another word for Stockholm syndrome. If you're trying to stay with a narcissist to fix them, you have Stockholm syndrome. You have a demonic soul tie and you're in an ungodly covenant and God don't bless mess. Do you understand me? All right. So anytime you're dealing with a narcissist, it, there's a lack of accountability. All right. Narcissists are bullies, uh huh, covert, overt, malignant. They are bullies until you turn the tables around on them, and then they're the victims. All right, you ever you ever seen a Karen? That's a Jezebel. That's a demon. Do you understand me? And then when you call them out, then they got these crocodile tears. Devil be gone. Do you understand me? That ain't nothing but a demon manifesting. OK, but narcissists, as soon as you go no contact or do something now, it's I don't know why they, you know, they, you know, they got a sob story. No, you know why they know why. And you know why. Listen, Diane, ask me how I know I walked over, but I limp back and I'm only healed by the blood. Do you understand me? So you got covert, overt, malignant antisocial they come in a variety of personality types but at the end of the day these are demons psychology does not answer for the spiritual realm psychology does not have the answers for the spiritual realm psychology is the study of psyche it's the study of the mind it's not the study of the spirit so it's not even fair to us in all actuality to expect psychologists and those who work in the realm of psychology to understand what goes on in the spirit. That's not their realm. This is why God equips spiritual warriors. This is what the Ecclesia is supposed to do. But the Ecclesia takes abuse and hands it off to the psychology world. Psychology does not have the answers for demons. Psychology does not have the answers for psychosis, psychology or they or demons. They don't have the answers for the spiritual realm. They have the answers for the psyche, for the mind. The, body, the Bible is your instructions for what to do with the spirit. Do you understand me? For what to do with the soul, what is your mind, your body, and your spirit. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right? Jesus came to set our soul and our spirit free. So this is why you who come out of this 
Now you are commissioned, some of you are now commissioned to go help set other captives free. Do you understand me? There has to be people who understand spiritual warfare because that's what narcissist abuse is. Yes, you have to heal your spirit, your mind, but the spirit has to be set free first. The spirit has to be aligned with God first in order for you to heal somebody's mind. Do you understand me? All right. So you find a lot of people try to do it backwards and God can do anything. He can, you know what I mean? But deliverance is setting your soul. It's ransoming your soul. It's ransoming your spirit. All right. All right. So understand what psychology is and understand what, it, what it's not. It's needed to study your mind, to heal your mind from those thoughts processes and, and things that are in your subconscious mind. But understand it's not there. If you tell a, a doctor that you see demons, you tell a, a, a somebody who is not equipped in spiritual warfare that you see a demon in your house, that you see, that you hear prophets, that you hear spirits. They're going to put you on some farmicos. You're going to, like Solomon said, you're going to be walking around a, a, a padded room in, in, in white. Do you understand me? They're going to lock you up. Keep telling people that you see demons. That's not their realm. Now, are there psychologists who understand spiritual warfare? Sure. We need them in the e ecclesia. We need soul healing ministries. We need this. Do you understand me? We need this. But we also got to understand at the core of what it is. All right. We have to understand that. All right. No, don't expose them. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I'll say if you want to listen, if you want to blow the spot up, expose them. But it, it does no good. It, it'll it's why. Well, I mean, you got to understand what is your reason for exposure, I guess. That does not mean that you can't tell the truth. You know, if God has called you, I say be led by the Holy Spirit in all things, right? Ask God, but make sure your motives, that you're not doing this out of hatred. You're not doing that out of malice. Um, you may be trying to warn people, but most of the time people are not going to listen to you anyway. I've told people, hey, watch, watch this. People, one thing when you learn the psychology of the mindset of how people work, you know, people do things that are convenient for them. They believe people who they believe who they want to believe. And if you expose it, you got you got to be ready for the warfare that comes with that. Most of the time, it's not recommended that you tell them why. What what is it going to do you? What good is it going to do you? Now you can tell your like I tell my story, right? But I don't. T I tell it from a heel perspective. I don't do it because I'm angry. I don't do it because I'm bitter. I don't do it because I'm unforgiving. I don't do it. I, you know what I'm saying? So why, why are you doing that? Your motives have to be pure in that. And then um, like, what? yeah, examine your motives. Why are you doing, are you doing it to help people? If it's the new supply? No, absolutely not. I don't think so. Because most of the time people aren't going to listen to you anyway. And that's the sad truth. God bless you, Nandy. May God return that back to you over and above measure. God bless you. So uh, I recommend if you want to blow the spot up, sure. But if you don't, it, I mean, go on with your life. The, the best revenge is living life and living life well. OK, um, but yeah, exposing just for exposure say no. All right. They they don't. It won't matter if you expose. They don't they don't care. Right. And they're going to say, see, I told you she was crazy. They gonna It's going to it'll backfire on you most of the time. So walk away, sis, and don't look back. Listen, that's what I did. Walk away. Blow the listen. Walk away and go live your life and live your life well. Smaller, you don't do it right. You're welcome. Yeah, right. It won't end well for you. Right. So you got people speaking for it. Um, when I did it, uh, it didn't end well. It ended well for me, but it at that time it wasn't well. Uh, yeah. So yeah, would I do that again? Uh, it needed to be done, but would I do it in a different manner? Probably not. But it brought on warfare that I, at that time, I was not prepared for, right? They can be, right, because not all, there are different levels to this. Some are very psychotic, right? Some are very malignant. A narcissist is, has demons. What do demons hate? You got to remember that this is warfare. You're not waging war against principalities. 
Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Demons hate exposure. When you hear people say, I hate, I don't expose, don't expose. Why? I mean, the truth, if it's the truth, let it be come out. He, I watch people that don't like exposure. Now, well, God, you know, if you're repenting, God, you know, love covers a multitude of sins. But well, I watch people that don't like things to be exposed. I want the truth, whether it's me, because all I'm going to do is repent. You know, whoever it is, I like the truth to be exposed. But I, but you got to realize you're not warring against flesh and blood. These are demons. Demons hate exposure. You shine a light on that thing. Narcissists hate exposure. And they will go out of their way to destroy your life. All right. Because you expose them. So, yeah, probably not. Right. I did. You did, too. And it brought on warfare. Right. Right. And then, right. It makes, and then you, you're showing them your hand. You got to remember, you got to play chestnut check, checkers. You're showing them, you're, you're giving them um, the cliff notes. So now they know how to counterattack you. So, yeah, keep on walking. So this seems like the general consensus is keep on walking. All right. So signs of a demonic covenant. When you're in a demonic covenant, you live a lie. You live a lie. You understand me? Is that hard for y'all to hear? You live a lie by default. Do you understand me? A person with the Jezebel spirit or MPD, all right, has put in a lot of work to maintain this image. And that's also probably why you don't expose them like that. To maintain this, this facade. They've gone their whole life pretending to be somebody that they aren't. And then you come along and try to expose that. You come along, all right, or you get in bed with that. You, by default, begin to live the lie because now you're, you're in narc land with them. So when you enter a covenant with a narcissist, you're entering into a demonic covenant. You're entering into what I call narc land. Narc land is a distorted, a distorted reality. All right. It's like a, a house. I've done messages on Narcland if you want to go deeper into that. But it's like living in a in a horror, a house of horrors. I was going to say a fun house with the mirrors, but it's not a fun house. Ain't nothing fun about it. All right. All right. It's like a house of horrors. And so the everything is distorted in the house of horror, horrors. So when you enter into their world, you enter into a world of deception, a world of lies, a world of trickery and manipulation and deception. And this is why it, it causes cognitive dissonance. It almost causes you to split. Because on one hand, you know what you know. And on the other hand, when you're in their world, you have to tell yourself lies to stay there. Anybody that's in a narcissist relationship is living a lie. The narcissist is living a lie. And by default, you live a lie. How do I know you live a lie? Because you lie to maintain the relationship. Oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. No, I'm okay. You're li that's a lie. You're not okay. You're not okay. What you're experiencing is not okay. So you're living a lie. And you, you avoid telling people the truth about what's going on in your household. Oh, it was just me. You avoid telling the people the truth about what you're going through because you don't, you don't want to make the narcissist look bad and then you're so full of shame. And you, the reason why you don't want the narcissist to look bad is because if you go back, if you leave and you go back, people are going to look at you crazy because now you didn't told people what this person did to you and now you look crazy if you go back. Do you understand me? You look crazy if you go back. Some people don't care. All right. So you live a lie. You live a lie to protect the narcissist's ego and you live a lie to protect your own ego. You live a life of shame. You don't you don't tell people the truth. So that's that sign that you're in a demonic covenant. And the thing about a narcissist, a narcissist may even pretend to love and worship God. They go to church. Narcissists go to church. Yeah, they go to church. They don't go there to worship God. They go there to be seen in the synagogue. They go there to check the block. It's about religion. A narcissist does not worship God in spirit and truth. Religion simply means like a routine. It's routine. It's what we do. It's what we've been raised to do. It's culturally acceptable. It's like taking out the trash on Wednesday. It's like taking out the trash on Sundays and Wednesday. It's a routine. It's a religion. It's nothing more than that. They don't love God. They don't worship God. 
They're in covenant with Baal. Narcissists are in covenant with Jezebel. Do you understand me? They don't worship God. They use God to appear godly. That's it. They use God to use the Bible to keep you bound. This is why you have to know the word of God for yourself. So that when people tell you things like God hates divorce, you understand how to exit these scripture and you understand who God was talking to. And people won't be able to use the Bible to keep you bound in abuse and adultery. Do you understand me? Because abuse is sin. When you're in a narcissistic relationship, you're in sin. God doesn't bless sin. When you're in a narcissistic covenant, you're in sin. Abuse is sin. Abuse is misuse of God's vessel. It is misappropriation of God's design for you. Now you can convince yourself that God wants you in that mess and many people do. Many people have convinced themselves that God wants them in a demonic covenant. They don't want the truth. They want, they want their idol. They want their idol and they want it so bad that they're willing to lie on God and lie to themselves in order to maintain their idol. You understand me? A narcissist doesn't have empathy for you. That's sign of a demonic covenant. And this applies to different relationships, okay? All right? A narcissist, signs of a demonic covenant, undermine your perception of reality. That never happened. What are you talking about? That never, that didn't happen like that. What are you talking about? I didn't do that. And you looking like, I know this joker. I know you ain't lying. I mean, I know you sitting here lying. All right. Gaslighting you, causing you to lose your perception of reality. With a narcissist, no person is ever enough. All right. You may be the Saturday girl or the, or the Monday man, but no person, no one person is enough for somebody that is not a narcissist. Do you understand me? Jealousy, anger, fits of rage, passive. All right. Future faking, makes false promises, does not deliver, minimizes others' success. Acts like they don't understand your emotions, thoughts, and feelings. They do nice things as a down payment for future abuse. Yeah, a narcissist will be nice to you. Yeah, they'll give you nice things. That's just a little narc insurance. That's just a down payment for what they're about to do to you. Yeah, they'll, they'll after, they, after they abuse you, yeah, they'll go buy you a gift. Yeah, they'll do that. That's to keep you in the, in the cycle. That's to, that's to keep you in the trauma bond. So now you're thinking, well, they did. They did buy me a flower last year. That's all. That's, it don't take much, does it? And then you it, it conditions you to accept the bare minimum. So when they finally act right on Thursday, you like, oh, it. That just reels you back in. You're like, oh, they acting right now. Oh, they bought me a flower last year. It conditions you to accept the bare minimum. You're happy with the bare minimum. You're happy when they act right in that. You're happy when they wash a dish. You're happy when today they're happy because they got some sex from the other supply. You know what I'm saying? Now you're happy. When they're happy, you're happy because y'all are one. They mad, you mad. They sad, you sad because they're controlling your emotions like an emotional ventriloquist. They got you on, on the string, something heavy. So they're controlling your emotions. Do you understand me? They're controlling your emotions like, a, like you're an emotional test dummy. They're controlling your emotions. You, you got that nard juice running through your veins. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You can tell when people have nard juice running through their veins. All right. They live to take advantage of others. That signs you're in a narcissistic demonic covenant. They're taking advantage of your kindness, of your love, of your passivity, of the codependency that you were raised in and, and now willingly accept. 
How do you know you're in a demonic covenant? Will not acknowledge your needs and desires. It's all about them. Hidden addictions. Now, not every addict is a narcissist, but a lot of narcissists have hidden addictions. Uh-huh. We don't, we don't like to, I have a whole message on narcissists and addictions. Some of y'all in here need to watch it. All right. Lies. Pathological liar. You, you like a narcissist, when they won't even tell the truth when it's easier to tell the truth. Because they get a high off of lying to you and you accept it. You ever seen that narc smirk? Oh, yeah, they like rubbing their hands together like Birdman. Like, yeah, okay, he accepted that. Yeah, she accepted that. Oh, I got over. That's all. It's, and it don't take much when you're codependent. It doesn't even take much. A little something and it, it, you back high again. You back on some dopamine because that's all you want. You just want the dopamine. You just want everything to go back. Your inner child is just, I just want things right. I just, I just want the peace. I just, because it, it it disrupts your peace. So you just want things right at any cost, even at self-sacrificing yourself. God bless you, Arne. God hates abuse of all kinds. People were not designed by Yahweh to be abused. Say it. Say that. We were not, you were not made to be a test dummy for a narcissist. And some of y'all have accepted that role. I'll just be a test dummy. I'll just sign up for abuse for the rest of my life. This is just the way it is. No, it ain't. No, it is not. God bless you, our name. May God return it to you over and above measure. Say that abuse is sin. All right. So they lie pathologically. They lie when telling the truth is easier. So how can you have a relationship when somebody is a liar? I can't even count on you to tell me the truth. Well, how could you build some, something like that with somebody? How can you expect to have a healthy relationship with somebody you cannot trust? How, Sway? How can you have a relationship with somebody you can't even trust to go to Piggly Wiggly? I can't even trust you to go to H-E-B and come back. I can't even trust you to go to work because at work, you might be flirting with, with Bob and Shelly because the narcissists go, they try sexual, bisexual, a lot of them. Somatic narcissists don't care where they get it. They just need to get it. So now you, you don't, you can't, you worried about men and women. You understand me? That's why some of them got them dirty draws. Got streaks and stains, and why? Mm, why you think that is? Should nothing be going in their back door? You understand me? It goes to women too. You think that she on a trip with her girlfriends, not knowing she on a trip with her girlfriend? You understand me? Like you can't even trust the friends, cause the friends are used as a cover to get them out the house. You understand me? So you can't even trust. The me like nobody's safe with a narcissist. You can't even trust them with your children. Truth be told, you can't even trust them with your children. Huh? You think that you can trust a narcissist with children? How many of us, if we were to take a poll and say how many of us were sexually abused as children? Who did it? Who did it? Narcissists usually. You understand me? Same people don't go around touching little girls and little boys. And then if it was a, a child that molested you, another child, they learned that behavior from somebody. It's spiritual. It's a generational curse. But you trust the narcissist around your children. Stop fighting for a narcissist to be in your child's life. They, your child is not safe with the narcissist. Spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Stop fighting for your child to be around a narcissist. That goes for grandparents too. If you know that they did it to you, they'll do it to your child too. Do you understand me? All right. Harper, who this woman? Squeak. Do you understand me? 
All right. Mm-hmm. Don't trust them with your children. Don't trust. Don't don't trust it. Come on, sis. All right. So how can you trust them? You can't trust them around children. You can't trust them around animals. A lot. Some of them are into bestiality. I'm not saying everybody that's into bestiality is a narcissist, but you got to be extremely perverse. You have to be filled with the spirit of Asmodeus, of Balao, where I can't even trust you around the dog. Because animals be knowing. I can't even trust you around our pets, around our children. I can, And I ain't talking just about men. I've seen videos. Of, I ain't seen it, but I saw it. A woman... They had a farm and the woman was allowing the horse. These people are demented. Straight up perversion and bestiality. You can't even, I can't even trust you with our horses. Man, sickos, do you understand me? So I can't trust you to go to the, to the HEB or the Publix or the Piggly Wig. I can't, listen, I can't trust you around the kids. Male or female? We just talked about a teacher that was sleeping with her student or whatever she was doing. I did a whole message on Mary Kay Letourneau. Watch it. A lot of people, a lot of men were turned out early by perverted women or perverted men. A lot of little girls were perverted at a young age by men in the family, by women in the family. Do you understand me? Who doing all this? Do you understand me? All right, girl, the Piggly Wiggly, do you understand me? Right, and that's so sad when you see that, when somebody just gives up their power, when an Ahab just gives up their power and they just accept that as a way of life. And, it's, and it kills them softly and slowly. That narcissist will drain that 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 Ahab to there's nothing else. And that person becomes a shell of themselves. How many of you became a shell of yourself with that narcissist? Let wake up people. I did not realize it was sexual abuse till later on. Right. And it could be with the same sex when you're small. You know, children learn, a lot of children that do that were themselves molested, you know, however it happened. Right, right. Well, you just have to do what you can to protect your child. I have messages on that too, okay? Hey, Tiffany. All right, so these are signs of an ungodly soul tie. A demonic covenant is an ungodly soul tie. All right? All right. And then some people stay in a demonic covenant because the narcissist will pretend to unalive themselves. I told you I have a message on narcissism and the spirit of murder. When a narcissist tells you that things like that, you better you better start making your exit strategy. Do you understand me? People people get so like um, desensitized when they're in narcissistic relationships that they don't realize they're like a frog in a boiling pot. So they they get acclimated to the heat. They get acclimated to the abuse. Because a narcissist slowly turns up. They, nobody goes into a narcissistic relationship on purpose. Do you understand me? Unless they fools. But most of us went into it and that gauge on that stove got turned up a little bit at a time. And before you know it, that thing is on full blast. Do you understand me? And what it does is it desensitizes you. It conditions you. It grooms you. It does all those things because there's a lot of mind games and um, emotional manipulation going on. So it conditions you to accept abuse. Eh, no, it wasn't that bad. When he hit me in my eye that time, it, you know, it wasn't that. It wasn't as bad as the last time when she. Punch me in my throat. It wasn't, you know, you know, she's little. You know, all the things, it desenses you. 
and then you sound crazy. And then when you get out of it, you realize it was worse than I thought. Oh, it was just me. And so what a narcissist does is they use your emotions. They don't regulate their emotions, but they use you as their emotional ventriloquist. They use you as their emotional test dummy, right? So they use you to regulate their emotions. So it's like I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever I say bounces off of me and sticks to you. This is why you have to learn what's not yours and what is yours. You got to learn that you're not here to save everybody. You got to learn what is your emotions. No, that's not mine. Uh, uh, uh. You're not going to project your emotions onto me. I'm, I'm empathetic, but you can't use me to regulate your emotions. This is why you don't get sucked in to people's emotions. God made us empathetic, prophetic people. He made you empathetic to be, to be an intercessor for people. He did not make us as an intercessor or a prophetic voice, all right, to be a sponge for abusers. He did not make you empathetic to pick up the emotions of your mama, of your daddy, of your bloodline. He did not make you empathetic to absorb other people's emotions. No, I'm not absorbing your emotions. I'll pray for you. But once I, and I had to learn that. I had to, that's something that I had to teach myself, that the Holy Spirit had to teach me how to regulate my emotions and not how not to pick up other people's trash. I'm not picking up your emotions. I'll pray for you, our inner seed, but you can't dump all your stuff onto me. And if you're not careful, even in the narcissist abuse community, you'll pick up people who don't want to fight for themselves. And so they get in bed or they, they come around people who are stronger because now I'm going to dump all my stuff onto you because you're strong enough to fight this battle. No, baby, you better pick up your sword and fight too. I ain't fighting your battles. I used to do that. Oh, wow. No, no, because that, that's the role that I was given. The problem solver. Now I make it work for me now. But I can't pick up what's yours. I got to teach you how to fight. If, you, if, if I give you a fish, people always want handouts. If I give you a fish, you eat for a day. But if I teach you how to fish, you eat for a lifetime. No, you ain't dumping your problems off. No, that's not my, I have my own problems. Yes, we intercede. Yes, we pray. But our empathy was not to be used in that way. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? All right. So marriage, marriage, the word of God says marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immoral. That's Hebrews 13 and 4. Come on, the marriage bed is undefiled. You got a goat in your bed. You sleeping with horses and dogs and can't even trust you around the dog. Can't even trust you around the cat. Can't even. You're sick. You have a spirit of perversion. All right. So marriage to a narcissist will be extreme highs and extreme lows. It will be a mere a, a miserable existence. And that's what you're doing. You're existing when you're with the narcissist. You're not living. You don't live till you come up out of that mess. God bless you. Thank you, sis. You don't live until you come out of that mess because the narcissist's goal is to drain the life force out of you. You understand me? That's right. I tell all my girls to watch the energy of your companions. At, they should look uh, at us as leaders. Yes, a lot of them are. I know uh, the sociopath I was married to was. They're wrestling with demons. You know, anybody that um, usually is in perversion or this is why, like, you see people in entertainment and like strippers or you know, exotic dancers, like you have to numb yourself. It's all about numbing. And this is why you can't numb yourself. You have to feel your emotions. You can't numb yourself because it will be easy to, easier to do when you come out of this. You cannot numb. They're trying to numb themselves to do what they do. All right. God bless you, Purple Crown. May God bless you and return it back to you over and above measure. Same to you, Trucker for Life. God bless you both. God bless you. 
All right. God bless you, uh, San, uh, Sherby Sandy. God bless you. May God return that back to you. May you live in the overflow of those seeds. Hallelujah. So Proverbs 21 and 9 says, it is better to live in the corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. All right. Because there's narcissistic women. You do not want to live in a house with a narcissistic woman. Do you understand me? She'll make your, she'll listen, she'll make your life hell on wheels. Do you understand me? A it, the Bible says it's better to live on a rooftop than in a house with a cantankerous woman. All right. So they are controlling. They will Ahab you. This is why we have a lot of Ahab men. They've been Ahab by their mothers and then they go marry a Jezebel. All right. Or they become a Jezebel. All right. So brothers, you got to come up out of these, these demonic covenants. All right. This is what's going to raise your children. The spirit that's in that woman will raise your children. That's dangerous. God bless you, husband. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. God bless you all. All right. So you got to realize we can't be out here. You can't be out here just dating willy nilly. She may look good, but is she a devil in a blue dress? What difference does it make? Listen, all right. And narcissistic men, same thing. All right. Run, sisters, run. The, the Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. A narcissist ain't giving up nothing for you. No, you, you, you the one going to be doing all the sacrifices. You're going to be in a relationship with your own self when you were a narcissist. They ain't taking care of the kids. Barely, barely. Do you understand me? You don't love your kids. They just want to use your kids as a ley line to you. That's why narcissists have children. They don't have children because they want them. They have children to appear good. They have children to, to, to act as slaves. They have children to live by care. They have children to live vicariously through them. They have children as a ley line and a silver cord to you. That's why narcissists have children. To, so that they always have something to torment you with. They always have a ley line back to you if you have a ch child with them. Ouch and amen. Ephesians 5 and 28. And the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. So what is the fruit of your marriage? If you're married, if you're in a relationship, what is the fruit of that? Because every marriage has fruit. All our lives have fruit. And I realized when I was married to a sociopath, the harvest came in. And when that harvest of what I sowed came in, man, that thing almost took me out. Do you understand me? So you have to watch where you sow. If you don't want the harvest that comes with a narcissistic covenant, a demonic covenant, don't sow into it. You will know people by their fruit and you will know unions by the fruit that they bear. Your children are your fruit. Your children are your fruit. All right. What your marriage produces is your food. fruit. What, what is your marriage producing? Is it producing kingdom building? Then you have a kingdom marriage. If it's producing strife and discord, you're in a demonic covenant and God didn't ordain it. You sanction that. All right. So signs of a kingdom marriage. Let's discuss that. Signs of a kingdom marriage. All right. You come together as Christ, as your foundation. It's not built on love, money, sex, worldly pursuits or exploits. You are both intentional about God because God is the cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of your union. It's not your will or, or the will of each of you over God's. It's your God is the, the Godhead, the triune, the Holy Spirit is the Godhead. It's the husband, it's the wife, it's the children. That's God's design. That's signs of a kingdom marriage. All right. You have a vision. You have a vision for your marriage. God bless you, Linda Best. God bless you. And thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Thank you, Pastor Ezra. Amen. Amen. No trauma dumping. All right. 
a willingness to meet one another's needs. In a narcissist relationship, your, your needs ain't going to be met. They don't care about your needs. They'll look at you like you got three eyes. Like they, I remember that like, I would be like, this is hurting me. Like, they ain't hurt me. What it got to do with me? They don't care about your feelings. They don't care if they hurt you. In a, in a kingdom marriage, all right, there is, there's a willingness to meet one another's needs. You're supportive. You're supportive. Solomon and I are supportive of one another. I didn't have that before. All right. There's trust. There's trust there. Emotional safety is huge with me. Is emotional safety huge with you? Emotional safety is huge with me. I did not grow up with emotional safety. All right. I didn't grow up with emotional safety. I grew up in a very emotionally explosive household. You know, it wasn't safe for me to express my feelings. It wasn't safe for me to be who I was called to be. It just wasn't safe. All right. I didn't grow up with emotional safety or emotional regulation. So these were things that I've always craved, but I didn't know. I didn't know that. So when I met Solomon, I had, I have emotional safety. He's a protector. He's my safe space. I can finally be authentically me. Do you understand me? I'm silly. I'm goofy. I'm serious. And I realized how things have been covered up. Who I was have been covered up. God, when you're with the wrong person, they can't see you. And your gifts and talents will be covered up a lot of time. Some of you, your gifts, you don't think you have gifts and talents. But when you're with the wrong people, God will shield them from who you really are. And that's for your protection. That's for your protection. That people will reject you when you're in the wrong environment. Do you understand me? So when you're in the right relationship, things will be uncovered. Your gifts, your talents, who you are, your purpose will be unveiled if you don't already know it. Do you understand me? So things, God will allow people, things to be hidden about you. And then when you're in a kingdom relationship, things will be uncovered. Do you understand me? The more you you are together, the longer you are together, there will be things that you need to address and things that you need to heal. And they will be uncovered. It's beautiful. It's ugly. But God is in the midst of it all. You won't have to give up your dreams and aspirations. You won't have to be unsure and walk on eggshells. Men, she won't be unsure of you. She won't use you for your money. She won't use you just because you're a provider and a protector. She, she will guard your heart. That's important for men. It's important for men and women both to have safe spaces. When you come home or you work for whatever it is, your home should be your place of safety. Your house should not be a place and this is if you live with a narcissistic parent, whatever it is, your home should be a place of refuge from the world, from the elements. You should come together to fight the elements, not the elements to be in your house. When you close the door, you should go to war together, not the war be from within. When the warfare is within, there's a problem. And that's what you have when you have a narcissist. You're in bed with your enemy. You're sleeping with your enemy. And you're too blinded to see it. So me and she won't be unsure of you. She won't use you for what you have. Women, all right? All right, or me and she'll be healthy. She won't be perfect but she'll be healthy minded or on her way to be healthy minded. Do you understand me? Sisters, you won't have to be his rehab center. He's going to want to do that work as things are unveiled. Do you understand me? 
<laughs> God bless you, Arne. Amen. Amen. All right. You, he will be healthy. And then areas where there was darkness, because there are going to be areas that when you're with somebody, like there's work to do when you're uh, individually before you get into the marriage. And then there's going to be still work that you need to do individually. And then there's going to be work that you have to do collectively as you learn one another, as you leave and cleave to one another. You got to learn how to resolve trauma and conflict. You got to learn to, to uh, break those generational curses that you both were born into. You have to learn how to resolve trauma and conflict in a healthy way. You have to learn how to address issues that were once uncovered. And you got to, you can't live in shame when things are exposed because things are going to be exposed about you. When Solomon and I got married, things were revealed. I had a level of healing. And then together we had to go into a deeper level. And every day is just deeper levels of healing. Because that's what the consecration and the pruning and the wilderness, all that is for that. And so either you're going to come together to fight generational curses. Or you're going to fight, if you're in a narcissistic relationship, not only are you fighting your generational curses and you getting whooped around like the seven sons of Sceva, now you got to fight your generational curses, your altars, your demonic covenants that are in your bloodline, and now you're fighting theirs too. And this is why people get overwhelmed when they're in narcissistic covenants because the warfare is not outside. The warfare is within. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. When you're in a narcissistic covenant, you getting whipped around because all the demons are coming at you and the narcissist hands their demons off to you. Fight that. Fight my battles. And you picking them up like, okay, you can't fight your battles in the narcissist too. You're not even equipped to do that. And that's why you feel the load so heavy on, on you. You're fighting ancient familiar spirits that you are at that time when you're in, and, and Beelzebub does not cast out Beelzebub. I have people that come to me and they want to stay with that narcissist. This is deliverance. Now I can work with you, but the goal is for you to come out of that demonic covenant. The goal for deliverance ministries and soul healings and coaching is not to help you maintain your demons. It's to help you get delivered from them. Do you understand me? So if you want to stay in a demonic covenant, I'm not for you. I'm for those who want to get free because I'm not going to teach you how to coexist with demons. Jesus didn't teach people how to coexist with demons. He taught us how to cast them out. He's not teaching you how to coexist because that's what people really want. Just say you want it. I want to learn how to coexist with my narcissist. I, what you're saying is I want to learn how to give up myself. Teach me how to give up myself. Teach me how to coexist with demons and be happy. Teach, like, it's almost like they want you to be their David and their Saul. They want you to, they want to, they want you to play the music to alleviate to relieve them of the torment that comes with being in a demonic relationship. So they want you uh, pray for me, pray for me, because they want temporary release. No, you want to use the anointing. You want to pervert the anointing to soothe your demons. Tell the truth about it. I'd rather you tell the truth about a thing. I'd rather you tell the truth about a thing. You want a demon tamer. Oh, that's what you want. You want a demon tamer. You want somebody to help soothe your torment. We don't do that here. We don't, that's not what deliverance is. Do you understand me? God bless you, Dana Hayes. I'm not teaching you how to coexist with a demon. You, I want to teach you how to raise up in your authority so that you have power and authority to tell that devil to flee out of your life. I'm not teaching you how to coexist with a demon.
with a demon carrier. I'm not, I'm not somebody. That might be somebody else's mission, but it ain't mine. Not teaching you how to coexist. I don't teach people how to coexist with demons. All right, you are made to carry the glory of God, not to not to soothe demons. But some of you, that's what you want. That's what you want. Some of you, that's what you want. Do you understand me? You absolutely can, Joyce. You absolutely can. It'll be right here. It's heavy in it, Miss Tanya. It's heavy, Latanya. It's heavy. It's heavy. But the truth shall set us free. Amen. Amen. All right. So when you come together. Uh, uh, wives bring favor, husbands. We bring favor, women. Women, you got to know who you are. You got to know your worth. You got to know your value. Because if you don't, people will try to discount you. Do you understand me? Wives bring favor. Do you understand me? The, the Bible says in Proverbs 31 and 10, an excellent wife who can find. Ha, you better know who you are. Some of you are wise in the realm of the spirit and you're waiting on your kingdom spouse. An excellent wife who can find her. She is far more precious than jewels. I know I'm a jewel. And it ain't got nothing to do with looks or any of that. It's the spirit of God that resides in me. I'm a woman after God's heart. So yeah, I'm gonna make an excellent wife. Yes, I'm going to make an excellent mother. Yes. My husband ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about me because I'm a woman that's in covenant with God before he ever met me. You understand me? All right. So Proverbs 12 and 4, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness to his bones. A good woman will make her husband proud. A good, and, a, and a good woman will make God proud and favor will shine upon her and her household where her children rise up and call her blessed. Do you understand me? You don't want a wife who has your name and she running around town with every Tom, Dick and Harry. She in everybody's inbox flirting. She on social media showing her assets. And this, this you? No, she for everybody. How, and then some men get off on that. How you marry and want the world? Man, all of this, all of this ain't for the world. How you marry and your wife have naked on social media? How you naked? How you, how you, show, how you feel comfortable to show everybody what should be private? Because you don't have respect for yourself. How you marry and on social media with back shots? And you call yourself, I'm a woman, a guy in your bio, in your bio only. You understand me? That's an embarrassment. That's an embarrassment to you. It should be an embarrassment to God. And then it's an embarrassment to you. And then it's an embarrassment to your husband. We should know what, what are you doing? Turn around, pick, stand up, address your, put your crown on girl. Put your crown on. What are you doing? What are you doing? We don't need to see your 36, 24, 36 all over social media. What are you doing? And this is where you have to know who you are. You have to know what your worth is. Your worth is not in your physicality. Yes, beauty is a blessing. God gives us beauty for ashes. But that doesn't make up who you are. That's not who you are. That's an asset. And your asset shouldn't be all over social media for everyone to see. That's an embarrassment. I would be embarrassed. All right. Same if you were men. You walk around here with Eddie Long, stuff on, take that mess off. That's for your wife. That's for her. That's hers. All right? That's hers. All right? A, a husband is a priest of his home. He's a provider, a protector. He's loving. He's attentive. 
not selfish. And he loves his wife as he loves the church, as he loves Christ. That's right. You got to speak life over yourself. A kingdom wife. That's a wife. I see wives in the realm of the spirit. And if you're not there yet, listen. And if you're not a wife to a man, you're a wife to uh, as a bride, as a bridegroom. You're a wife in the spirit. I had to be a wife in the spirit before I came a wife in the natural. I'm an excellent wife. Arnace, I'm an excellent wife in the spirit. You better speak that over yourself. You around here dogging yourself out. No, you're an excellent wife. Right. If a man think he the prize, man, get your. I mean, you you are, but you ain't. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? A woman is the is uh, of God is the foundation of her household. Absolutely. Now we know the man. We 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 get what you're saying. You understand me? Thank you, yo breaker. Oh, thank you, Donna. God bless you. And thank you, yo breaker. You are teaching and helping me and so many. I thank God for this ministry and family. Y'all gonna make me cry. God bless you. Thank you, yo breaker. May God bless and uh, keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So when a person loves God, I can't abuse my husband. Do you understand? I can't abuse my children. It, 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 it's, it's hurting myself. Do you understand me? And I, because I live to please God, I'm a woman after God's heart first. So I can't misuse his people. I can't misuse his temple. I can't misuse myself. I can't abuse my husband. I can't abuse my children because I have the love of God in me. All right. Now I ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. I'll snap off and pop off and, you know, and I'll be like, I'm sorry, husband. I'm sorry, y'all. Forgive me. I'm healing. Not healed. I'm healing. All right. But when you, somebody loves God, hurting you is hurting themselves. Hurting my husband hurts me. You understand me? Hurting my children hurts me. And because I'm, I'm highly sensitive, right? I can feel when they are in pain. I can, like, I literally feel it in my skin. I know that may sound weird. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There are different forms of the prophetic. There are, we have our five senses, God, that God made to be in tune with him. I literally feel their pain. I spiritually feel their pain. Somebody in here know what I'm talking about. You understand me? God bless you, Tochi. It's good to see you. God bless you. And thank you for being here. May God bless you over and abundantly. Amen. You got to have respect for yourself, right? Love and care. You have to. You have to respect yourself. Pick your crown up, sis. That's why I have rock your crown for women. That's why we come together. Because crown, you have to know who you are first. And if you don't, you'll fall for every Tom, Dick, Harry. You'll, you'll fall for the okie doke. We ain't doing that no more. All right. So God, when God is in something, you will know. You will know it by its fruit. But it starts with you. All right. These are signs of a of a godly message. Oh, let cry, let it out, let it out. We cry over here. We cry and then we grieve and then we get it back up. We get back up, right? So this is about a man. Sisters, if I see, listen, y'all better not be near one of y'all, almost 200 people in. You better not be in here proposing to a man. You better not. You better not be out here proposing to no man. When a man wants you, he will pursue you. Am I right, fellas? When a man pursues you, when a man loves you, when the man has a heart of God for you, he will pursue you. You won't have to get on no bended knee. What are, we, what are you doing? Who raised you to think that it was a, and, and don't li listen, I'm talking about, I'm not talking to you. Oh, I proposed to my, good for you. I'm talking to kingdom women. I'm talking about women who wear their crowns. 
I'm not talking about women who try to put crowns on clowns. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about women who know their value. You ain't got to pursue no man. You understand me? How you get them is how you gotta how you how you get them is how you gotta keep them. Right there chasing him, you out of order. You out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. You understand me? You out of order. You out of order. And the same way, listen, you got them is the same way you're gonna have to keep them. You're gonna be around there chasing him around the house. You're you gonna be around, he's gonna be in your panties. Do you understand me? I, I wouldn't even. And then as a man, like, how does do you want to tell them to get up? <laughs> get up, girl. Like, like, and they be sitting there like giggling. What are you sniggling about? Tell her to get up. Tell her to get up. No. All right. And as a look for, for my brothers, no, it can't all be about all physicality. That's nice. God will give you a beautiful woman. He'll give you or he'll turn when you have eyes for that woman. All right. But no more bewitchment. No more out here dating devils in blue dresses. And some of them come nice. Some of them seem nice and sweet till you get her behind closed door and then she turned to a pit bull with a skirt on. No, she throwing lampshades at your head and turn into, look, you think her, she turned into the exorcist when she get mad. Run, run from her. If she turns into a different, oh, well, I would, she, oh, she feisty. No, she's demonized. She got things to deal with before you get in bed with her, before you marry her. And you should not be in bed with her if you're not married to her. And you should not pursue her if you don't really want her. You understand me? We got to learn. All right. God bless you, uh, Latanya. Much gratitude for the anointing here. Narfi living was God's answer to my prayers for Holy Spirit led help to heal from narc abuse and remain free. Never again. Never again. We're Latanya, we are learning things that we just simply were not taught, right? God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. Thank you for being here. So we're supposed to teach. I guess I'm an elder now. I guess I'm an elder. Now. We're supposed to teach the younger women. But the problem is a lot of the older women are in demonic covenants themselves. So how are you going to teach me about something that you don't even apply to your own life? How are you going to be a coach and you in a demonic covenant? I'm not listening to you. I'm definitely not listening to you because you don't apply the principles of God to your own life. You, you have not learned to walk in wisdom. So why would I, why would I listen to you coach me? You couldn't coach me out of a paper bag because obviously you can't coach yourself out of that demonic covenant. So what you going to teach me? You understand me? No, I want people that apply the word of God to their life and are able to turn it around. You, 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 I've seen coaches that are talking about abuse talk, and they, and they with a narcissist. You live a lie. Why would I expect you to tell me the truth? No, get your butt up out of that so you won't live a lie. You won't feel inauthentic. Trying to become a therapist. Coach yourself. Get yourself in therapy first. Going, and I always say this, going into service professions because you went through abuse is not going to heal you from that abuse. Oh, I want to become a therapist because I was abused. No, get healed. Go through your healing. So now you can be authentic. You can come from a place of transparency. You can come from a place of overcoming. But how you, go, a coach guides people. That's all I do. I guide people. I lead people. I train people. I'm a leader. How can I lead you out of some place that I'm not willing to come up out of myself? How can I lead you out of Egypt and I'm still in Egypt in bondage? I'm in bed with Pharaoh. You in bed with Pharaoh and you in the pulpit. I ain't listening to you. I'm not listening to you. You in bed with Pharaoh, but you want to teach me about relationships. You couldn't teach me nothing because you don't apply it to your own life yet. Wisdom is knowledge applied. Wisdom is knowledge that you apply to your daily life. 
Your daily life is a lie. Why would I listen to you? We're not listening to you. Get up out of that stuff. Get up out of it. And then, then you will be authentic. Because if not, it's going to eat at you. It's going to eat at you that you're not walking in authenticity. And then when people come to you, now you got in the back of your mind, well, I'm doing the same thing. How can you teach me? How can you coach me out of a place where you're still in it? No, a coach has been there. A coach is a leader to Zion. It's like a Moses. All I am is like a Moses. I lead you out into your promised land. That's it. I'm a servant. That's it. But if I'm still in there, how can I teach you to go to a place where I haven't even come up out of myself? Now I can give you recommendations, but I ain't listening to you. I ain't listening to you like that. I, I, I mean, you can get wisdom from a dummy. You can get a you you can learn a lot from a test dummy, but I you you get what I'm saying. God bless you, smiling beagle. God bless you, and thank you so much for being here. God bless you. May God return it to you over and above measure. Thank you, Purple Crown. Same to you. God bless you. God bless you. I hope I'm making sense. The quiet rebuke. Is it quiet, Donella? It might be loud. Go off. Shannon's not playing today. We're not playing. We need people free. We need people free. Do you understand? We need people free. So we have to learn to communicate even in godly relationships. All right. And a kingdom marriage is not going to be perfect because the warfare is going to come up against you. You think the warfare don't come up against me and Solomon? Or you think that we, we've been through some things, right? We've been through some things, but the, it's from without. It's not from within. That's the difference. It's, it's outside. It's outsiders. It ain't in by the grace of God. So you got to be patient with one another. And as long as you keep God first and be honest and love one another and be respectful of one another, and honor God, it's going to be all right in a kingdom marriage. Do you understand me? All right. So let's talk about how trauma, how trauma can ruin your desire for a relationship, right? Trauma. We, we hit on this earlier. So Anna had a comment earlier and she said something to the effect. Whew, she said something to the effect. Where's that book? She said something to the effect of um, I'm childless. I'll never be married. Something like that. Basically, she spoke a curse over herself. Solomon talks about this book, right? It's by Derek Prince. And it says, does your tongue need healing? He talks about this on his channel. I think Arnae has it. A few other people have it. I haven't read it. I think this is going to be the first book of his book club, right? Does your tongue need healing? Life and death is in the power of your tongue and the way you think. So you have to renounce stinking thinking. You Listen, if it seems hopeless, you got to know that we serve a God that can do anything but fail. And a lot of people, the problem is you're not in covenant with God, but you expect God to be in covenant with you. If you're in covenant with, with Jezebel and you're in a demonic covenant, you got to understand Jezebel is charged with taking care of you. The God that you kneel to, the God that you bow to is the God that is charged with taking care of you. So if you're in a demonic covenant, Baal and Jezebel are charged with taking care of you. God is not your provider. Jezebel is. So you won't get what Jezebel give you until you come out of that covenant and you make God your God. Then you, then you are heir to the promises of God. But what a lot of people do, they're in covenant with Jezebel. They're in covenant with Ahab and they still want the blessings of God. No, you're double-minded. And a double-minded man, a woman, is unstable in all their ways. So you got to come out of one covenant to take part in another. Do you understand me? I hope I'm making sense. So people, some people have made up in your mind because of unhealed trauma that this is all there is to life. That, you know, they're 60, 70, uh, 40, 30, 20 years old, and they think, that they have to stay in this demonic covenant, all right? Why do people stay in this? Because they are fearful of making another mistake. So this is their second, their third marriage. 
All right. So, you know, the backlash that comes with that. All right. So they're fearful of making another mistake. So they say the devil I know is better than the devil I don't know. Do you understand me? They're fearful of leaving. And then on the flip side, when you do leave a narcissist, the tricky part is the abuse doesn't stop. All right. So you got to be prepared for these things. Do you understand me? You got to be prepared for these things. All right. So Anna said, I lost my youth. I'm going to be single and childless forever. Now, Anna, we love you if you're watching. Or I'm just using this as, as an example, right? And I said, I'm going to be single and childless forever. I can't fall in love with anyone after six years. What spirit is that talking? This is a case study. What spirit is that talking? That's not Anna talking. It's not Anna talking. That's hopelessness talking. That's rejection talking. That's curses talking. Anna just spoke a curse over herself, right? She just spoke a curse over herself. She said she's going to be single and childless forever. Now, unless she wants that, if you don't want that, you don't speak that. And I renounce that and I rebuke that in the name of Jesus, all right? But that's rejection talking. That's pain talking. That's hopelessness talking, okay? I have whole messages on children, all right? And Prophet Quenisha has um, healing and deliverance messages on, on children, okay? Well, watch my, um, I have to go check my live streams, okay? All right? Um, but that, she just spoke a curse over us. If you spoke that over yourself and you, listen, you got to cancel that curse, Life and death is in the power of your tongue. You have to heal your subconscious mind. You have to heal your subconscious mind. If not, you, your, listen, your mind, where your mind is, is a reflection of the thoughts that you think about yourself. So if you think that about yourself, it's going to be that about yourself. You cannot speak negative words over your life and think that you're going to have a good life. It does. It doesn't work out like that. God bless you, BB. God bless you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your seed. Right? So of course, not everyone is going to be married. Not everyone desires marrying. Hallelujah. Everyone doesn't desire marriage, but some do. And because of trauma and because they don't want to be hurt again, they don't want to hope. When you go, when you're with a narcissist, you give everything up for that person. You give, because you're an idolatry, you give your heart, your mind, your body, your soul up for this deity. You understand me? And so when you, when it hurts you, you don't want to experience that level of pain again, it is heart-wrenching pain. I don't wish that on nobody. Do you understand me? So when people, they don't want to go, nobody wants to go through that again. So they say things like, I don't want to be married. I said something like that. I had to repent and rebuke that. I was like, I ain't, I ain't never. God said, shut your mouth up. Do you understand me? Shut your mouth. Watch your mouth. So if you've spoken those things over yourself, you, if you need to repent. You need to watch your mouth. Your life and death is in the power of your tongue. I am very careful about the words that I speak. You understand what I'm saying? Because I understand that life and death is in the power of my tongue. All right? You have to be slow to speak when you're angry because life and death is in the power of your tongue. You have to be careful the words that you write. You have to be careful about what you in, intake. Do you understand me? Because it's feeding, it's feeding a spirit. 
You understand? It's feeding something in your mind. But some, some people want to be married, but because of trauma, they don't want to experience the level of hurt again. So they don't want to hope because they don't want to get their hopes up. And narcissists, yes, he is. Narcissists or was. Narcissists rob you of your desire to love again. They can. And so before I met Solomon, I remember, you know, I had spoke certain words and, you know, or I don't even know if I spoke them, but I thought them. I was like, I ain't never. You know what I'm saying? And I had to repent against that. Right. And I realized I was at a choice point. There are certain like moments in my life where my choice points are just like clear to me. I can go this way or I can go this way. And it sticks in my mind. Right. So I knew I was at a choice point with saying those things. Right. And God highlighted that to me in the realm of the spirit. And I knew then how people feel, right? Because when you're with the narcissist, it can rob you of your desire to want to love again. And when you're like that, your, your pain is in vain. When you're like that, the narcissist wins. And I was like, oh no, baby, the, hey, listen. Ain't no narcissist that cold to make me never want to love again. Ain't no narcissist that got that much power over me to make me never want to love again. Because when you don't love, you are more like Satan. You are more like a narcissist. And that narcissist's goal is to rob you of your ability to be like God. They want to make you cold, heartless, and unempathetic just like them. And we have a number of people who said, well, that ain't going to never, never. And they turned into a Jezebel. They turned into the very thing that they hate. That's right, Jen. They turned into the very thing. I've seen people who are, now these people are truly unforgiving. They have a spirit of Leviathan on them. So Leviathan has come into their mind. They made an agreement. Now, when you make an agreement like that, nobody gonna ever hurt me like that. Nobody, listen, when you make when you make a vow, either angels, when you make a covenant with God, angels come to watch the word. They come, you know, because God watches over his word to perform it. So angels carry out that word. When you declare God's word over yourself, angels, God watches over his word to perform it and angels help you and assist you in that mission. When you make a declaration that you'll never love again, when you make a curse over yourself, demons come to reinforce that declaration, that curse that you spoke over yourself. Angels come to, to guard blessings. Demons come to guard curses. So when you make a curse, a pronouncement out of your mouth that I ain't going to never, I ain't going to never, I ain't going to, demons come because now you've made an agreement with their world. So now demons come to reinforce the contract that you, you just made with your mouth. They come to reinforce the agreement that you said out of your mouth. You made that declaration and now Leviathan you know, demons come in and now Leviathan comes to guard your heart. God didn't tell you to become hard hearted. He said, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. But you're supposed to give your heart to God, not demons. You're supposed to give your heart to God and your heart and your heart be, be so in alignment with God. Not demons. But if you make that covenant, Leviathan is going to come in and guard you. Leviathan is going to come in and guard the announcement, the declaration, the pronouncement, the curse that you spoke over yourself. Do you understand me? I hope I'm, I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. All right. So demons guard curses. And make sure they come to pass in your life. And angels guard blessing out of your mouth. You, it's supposed to flow living water. 
This is why you watch who you're connected to. Narcissist, when you're connected to a narcissist, you're connected to a dead thing. You're connected to death. God says, I put before you life and death. Choose wisely. I put before you abundant life. You have free will to choose if you want life or death. You have the power to choose by your actions. You have the power to choose in your marriages, in your relationships, and you have the power to choose in your words. Which one have you chosen? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. All right? So this is why you must get past how you feel and how I feel. Unhealed people are always about how they feel. Everything's about how I feel, my emotions. I only do what I feel. You led by your emotions, you'll be a narcissist test dummy. A narcissist needs your emotions to control you. That's how they control you, through the guilt, the shame. They control you. They use your own emotions as a ley line. Do you understand me? So anytime they want to pull you in, they pull you in through your emotions. If you're co-parenting with them, this is why you got to be, this is, you got to be gray rock in them things. Do you understand? If you have to co-parent with a narcissist, you got to speak to them. You got to gray rock them. You cannot allow them to, you, them to use your emotions. All right. You cannot allow that. Watch my message on baby mamas and baby daddies that I talk about that in depth in there. All right. All right. So people will say, I don't ever want to be in a relationship with God. Is that what God has for you? You'll be better off saying God's will be done. All right. But those people are really saying, I don't want to be hurt again. It's too much pain. It's too much pain for me to try because relationships are a risk. Entering a friendship is, is a risk. Entering a partnership is a risk. And it's a risk that I, I'm just not willing to take. And that's their choice if they want to. But if you want a relationship, you don't say those things. Do you understand me? God bless you, Shelly. I want to thank you and others for prayers for my health. Progress is slow, but it's progress. I am grateful waiting on one more surgical procedure. Hallelujah. Procedures. May God bless your surgery. May God bless you. May he heal you. May he cover you. May uh, we pray together. Continue to pray for Shelly. Continue to pray for those who are you need healing in their bodies and are recovering. We pray that everything goes well, Shelly. We pray that uh, God be your strength and that you be healed from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, brother Tyree. Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, yeah. So abuse can cause you to abuse yourself. Abuse can cause you to abuse yourself, right? The narcissist can be long gone out of your, out of your life. And I saw somebody say, well, cause I had a post about no contact with every day of no contact you heal. And they was like, well, I ain't healing. Uh, it's been five years and I'm still stuck in the same place where you ain't did your work. And, and listen, some in the buttermilk ain't clean because anybody that God delivers, he heals. Do you understand me? So something ain't right. You need help. You need help. So the narcissist is long gone. And now people take on, they take over and emotionally abusing themselves. And you, you can hear it in the way that they talk to themselves. You have an inner child inside of you that, that picks up, that, that most of the time needs to be healed. So you have to watch how you talk to yourself. How do you speak to you? I can tell how people speak to themselves. I, you can tell. You can tell if somebody truly is doing the work to heal their subconscious mind. You can tell if somebody is reading their word. You can tell if, because when you read your word, it brings life. It's a living word. You can tell if they believe the report of the Lord, if they believe the enemy. You can tell by the words that they speak out of their mouth. Do you understand me? So are you loving and kind to yourself? Are you slow to wrath with yourself? What do you do when you mess up? Are you hard on yourself? Can you look in the mirror and say, I love you? Look in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. Look in the mirror.
mirror and tell yourself, I love you and not come from a place of vanity and pride, but a place because God made you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, but you have to believe that. I don't care what you look like. To me, it's what, what's in a person. Your spirit is what makes you beautiful or handsome to me. I've seen people that are physically attractive, what the world calls physically attractive, but if they're ugly on the outside, they're ugly to me. I don't care how fine they are. I don't care what you look like. If you are mean, you are cruel, you are vindictive, you are evil, you are ugly to me. Do you understand me? That's just me. Because I look at the spirit of a person. I've seen people that the world would say are not physically attractive, but they are pretty on the inside. They are beautiful. They are handsome on the inside. And people will lose out on their kingdom spouses by, by going in line with the world tells you that you should be attracted to. You understand me. Don't lose out on your good thing. You understand me? Because God will give you eyes. I'm Shannon. You hear? I'm Shannon. You don't see this, Shannon? You don't, you don't see this? You don't, you don't. Girl, what you doing? You don't, you don't see? I'm Shannon. Where you at? You hear? You hear? You hear with us? All right? So how do you speak to yourself? Look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. My inner child did not receive the love and validation and emotional support that I needed as a child, but I'm no longer a child. I get to take my power back. I get to reparent myself. I will not operate in codependency in an attempt to get love. Do you understand me? A whole lot. I will not operate in codependency. I will not dull myself down and dull my shine to fit in with you. I will not invalidate myself and I don't see, I don't seek other people's validation because I'm already validated by the most high God. Your like is extra. I like me. If you don't like me, that's okay. I'm not going to shrivel up and die because somebody doesn't like me. I'm not going to shrivel up and die because my my family don't like me. They don't, ha they don't have that much power over me. But when you give your power away to people, you're dependent on if they like you or not. No, baby, your like is extra because I love me. Your like is extra because the most high loves me. Your like is extra. Your, your like is lying, yeah. Because I love me. And if you live by people's love, you will die by their hate. Why are you living and dying by how people treat you? How you treat me is of no effect to me. Do you understand? I mean, what you think about me is of no effect to me. If you think of me good, good. If you don't think of me good, good too. Who are you? You don't give people that much power over you. You living and die. Well, if they don't talk to me, then I'm going to die. Really? 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 You going to die? You going to die? Like you going you gonna to die? You going to die? You going to die if you go no contact. Like you going to die? Like you can't live. You can't live if somebody don't like you. You can't live if you go no contact. Man, you can't live. That's that's some heavy stuff. Do you understand me? That's why I used to do that every day too. I had on my mirror, Stephanie, I had, I am loved. I am enough. I am worthy. Uh, I am beautiful or something like that on my mirror. And I used to tell myself that every day until I start believing it. Because I realized I didn't truly love myself and my decisions in my life was, was a reflection of that. So I was like, well, God, teach me how to love myself. And then I started believe, reading the word of God and believing what God said about me. Man, Smalley D, man, I'm a good mess. All right, a good one. Not mean that in a good way. All right. So I will no longer operate in codependency in an effort for you to like me. That's taking your power back. 
If you don't know yourself, you'll find yourself in a demonic covenant. Do you understand me? If you continue to show up as a wounded man or woman, that is what is going to be drawn to you. Relationships are spiritual. If you reject yourself, that is what you will attract. Relationships are spiritual. Why does everybody keep bullying me? Every job I go to, they all bully me. Well, show up as a non-rejected person. Show up empowered. I don't have no problem with no bullies. I'm a grown woman. You, who do you think you want? You gonna think I'm gonna go to a job and somebody gonna be bullying me? I ain't 12. This ain't sugar. What is that? Sweet Valley High? This ain't high school. Who in here is walking into a job getting bullied? You need, you definitely need to come. Co you need some coaching sessions and you need some deliverance. I hate to see grown people disempowered. To, uh, when I go to the job, everybody don't like me. They book because you have a you have the garment of rejection on you, and people sense it. You don't have to say and being nice. Well, you being nice to people who don't like you will not will not cause them to like you. Well, I'm just gonna give and I'm gonna give. I'm gonna be the office mama. I'm gonna give them gifts and they gonna like me. No, they still not gonna like you and they gonna take everything from you. And you and then you gonna feel resentment. Well, I I did all this for them and they still wasn't gonna be my friend. No, because they were never your friend in the first place. When somebody's your friend, you don't have to do those things in order for them to like you. They like you because of you and you give because you're a giver, not because you're trying to get people to like you. But if people are bullying you on your job, it's because you have a garment of rejection. You need healing from the spirit of rejection. You may have an orphan spirit. You may have a vagabond spirit on you. You may have, people sense those things about you. Demons don't I always say this. Demons don't understand diplomacy. They don't understand your kindness and your, oh, I'll just be nicer. I'll just give some more. I'll just self-sacrifice some more. I'll just, you know, I'll just, I'll just. No, demons do not understand diplomacy. They understand authority. When you begin to walk in your authority, you ain't got to be walking around here getting bullied by grown people. Grown, pe grown men around there scared in their own house. Where are your kahunas? Grow up here. Uh, every time I uh, uh, speak up, she, uh, what? Speak up. Articulate your words. Hold your head up. Renounce rejection. Renounce Ahab and walk in your power and authority. And you won't be around here attracting demon carriers. They will. Res you may not like me, but you will respect me. You understand? You don't have to like me. But you will respect me. Why? Because I respect myself. And if you don't respect me, I'll simply remove you from my life. I don't have to bully people into respecting me. If they don't respect me, I simply remove myself from their life. Why? Because I respect and honor God in me. So when somebody doesn't align with that, I simply remove them from my life. Easy peasy. Right? God bless you, John. Women of wisdom is the bride of Christ. Women of folly is the bride of Lucifer. It is in Proverbs 7 and 8, I think. That's a good word. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. That's a good word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This ain't elementary school. We're out here getting, you, you got to heal from that. That means you need healing. You are out here getting bullied like you on the playground. Now you sit here, listen, no, you got to heal so that you walk in your power and your authority. And that takes a little time, all right? That takes a little time. But you, you ain't getting bullied. Not in 2024. You ain't getting bullied. Demons are not our friends. They still kill and destroy. So you got to renounce that spirit of rejection, all right? All right, so if you reject yourself, people are going to reject you too. It's it's a self self uh self, what is that self fulfilling prophecy? You cannot trick people. You cannot trick people. Spirit relationships are spiritual. If you don't like yourself, it's gonna show. 
listen, hey, if you could get this, if you don't like yourself, it's going to manifest in different ways. If you reject yourself, that's what you're going to attract. There's, it's, not, it's not heavy. It's not even a cheat code. So learn to like yourself. And people will love you too. And then it won't matter if they don't love you or not. Because acceptance begins with you. That's a game changer. It's a game changer. No, I said, if you, if you take my kindness for a weakness, I'm a very kind person. And if you take that for my kindness as a weakness, kind will not be how you remember me. If you think my kindness is a weakness, that's not how you're going to remember me. You understand me? But you're kind. That's why you straighten that into fasting and prayer. Fix that thing. Now she gone. Let the enemy fight your battles. God will fight your battles. Do you understand that? You ain't got to work. Take it to your prayer closet. Do you understand me? All right. So when you see something that you don't like about yourself, you don't wallow in that. When I see something, you know, what's that uh, like that acceptance prayer? God help me to, uh, you know, accept the things that I cannot change, you know, whatever that is. So when I see something I don't like about myself, I don't wallow in that. I, I don't listen. I, I may have a short pity party of one, but it's going to be very short. And then I formulate a plan to change it. Right. So I told you, if you read my newsletter a couple of weeks ago, or when was that? December at the month of just at the beginning of December, I was carrying around weight that I did not no longer want. So I formulated a plan. I had a pity party of one, a very brief one. Okay. <laughs> my daughter, and they'll tell you, I was like, what is going on? What am I doing? But I, when I break down, I break down to breakthrough. Anytime I have a breakthrough, I know I'm about to have a, anytime I have a breakdown, I know I'm about to have a breakthrough. So I had a breakdown. I had a pity party of one. All right. And then I, I went to work. All right. I said, well, God help me in this. I need help because I'm out of order. I'm out of order. My diet is out of order. Um, I'm not exercising. You know, I was in the military 23 years. This is, that's how I used to, I used to live a very regimented life. So I said, let me get back to basics. So I had to get sick of me first. And I don't mean like, you know, sick of what, how I was. All right. I had to get sick and tired of being sick and tired to leave that behind. But I still love me through all of that. You know what I'm saying? Whether I'm big, whether I'm small, I still love me. My, my weight doesn't determine the love I have for myself. The love I have for myself is internal. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's internal. All right. I still love me. I love me whether I'm a 10. I love me whether I'm a 12. I still love me. But I, but tomorrow, I said, I love you, girlfriend. But tomorrow, we getting up from this place. You understand me? We getting up from this place. I still love you. I still hold you accountable in love. But tomorrow we getting up from this place. So God helped me formulate a plan. All right. God help me to exercise, help me to eat better. I invite you in because obviously I don't know what I'm doing. I, I say that even though as ministry and, uh, and coach, I, God, I don't know what I'm doing. So help me, Lord. I need your help because I'm out of order. I'm out of sync. So, Lord, please direct my path and order my steps because I know you want me healthy. I know you want me to have stamina, endurance. I know this is your plan for me. So help me to take better care of your temple and your vessel. Help me to see and help me to do as you want me to do. So when you get sick and tired of accepting less than you deserve, even from you, you will follow through. That's why you don't have to coerce people to do things. When people get sick and tired of being sick and tired, then they will go into action and not a moment too soon. Not a moment sooner. You don't have to convince people to leave a narcissist. Only when they get sick and tired of being sick and tired, will they formulate a plan? Will they reach out? Will they leave? And not a moment sooner. 
They have to get sick and tired of being codependent. They have to get sick and tired of living in demonic torment. They have to get sick and tired of living beneath than what God has ordained for their life. And they won't do that until they are sick. You cannot convince somebody to leave a narcissist. That demon got a whoop up on them so bad and they have to catch a revelation of it. And then they will leave and not a moment soon. You ain't got to convince people. Let life handle people. Let life handle people. Life got a funny way of humbling us all. Life has a funny way. Listen, it, it will relieve you from a lot of stress if you just turn people over to God. Because God can show you better than I can. I ain't about to argue with you about your life. I'm not about to argue with you to do right. I'm not about, okay, all right. And, and, and listen, listen, minding your business and drinking your water will save you a lot of stress. Minding a business that pays you and drinking your water will save you a lot of stress. Do you understand me? All right. You in a death defying situation. You want me to talk to you like Dr. Romani? No, get your butt up out of that demonic bed. Get your butt up out of that covenant. That's what I'm going to tell you. All right. But then if you want to stay, girl, go ahead. Brother, do what you do. Listen, I ain't here to convince you. All right. When they get sick and tired, not a moment sooner. Not a moment sooner. Not a moment sooner. Jesus already paid the sacrifice, but if you want to pay it twice, if you think that you can pay it twice, who am I? Don't let people, let people, man, let people be free. Let people, let people be free. Let people be free. Do you understand me? God's will be done. God's will be done. All right. You ain't got to argue. You ain't got to argue. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Amen. All right. So we talked about unhealed trauma ruins your desires for relationships. So you have to heal that. All right. You have to watch your tongue, watch your tongue, watch your tongue, watch what you say about yourself and to watch how you speak to yourself. All right. Um, when you should not date or marry, these are just a few, these are just a few, you may have some in the comments. These are just mine. I don't think you should date or marry right after a relationship. You know, take the time to heal. And that's different from everybody. It could be six months. It could be a year. It could be two years. It could be five years. All right. Um, you know, some people, they leave a narcissist union and they immediately get into another one. Because a lot of times they watching a the narcissist. They watch, people like that usually watching the narcissist. When, right after you got to, right after you got to go get in another relationship. Mind the business that pays you. All right. But you need time to heal from that thing. All right. You need time to heal spiritually and, and your soul realm and your mind, your will, your mo you need time to heal. All right. And there's a lot of deep rooted issues. There's a, a lot of work that has to be done. All right. So when you should not date or marry, if you are trying to prove something to an ex. All right. If you're under pressure. Nope. If you have not processed what has happened to you. Nope. I don't think you should because you cannot bury it. You must face it to heal it because it will show up as sickness. It will show up in your body or as self-blame as guilt. It will manifest whatever you don't heal. It Listen, it, it, it will still manifest in certain areas of your life. It will manifest in the way that you think about yourself. It will show up in the way that you speak about yourself. If you, when you should not date a mayor, if you not have not identified your role, if you have not taken accountability and how you got into that relationship, oh, you're victim blaming? No, baby. It's taking accountability. Accountability is a game changer. And a lot of people run from accountability like Ray. You understand me? You got to take accountability. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you weren't conditioned. I'm not saying you weren't groomed, but you got to get to the root of that. You got to examine the fruit and discern the root. Or vice versa. All right. Um, when so if you don't, if you're not a person that takes accountability, don't get into a relationship. Just just stay single. Just just alleviate the world of you. All right. Because if you can't take accountability, because that's you, you're a narcissist, basically. You'll be very narcissistic if you think that everything is the narcissist. All right. Because it ain't, it wasn't all them. As evil as that thing, that demon that I was married to was. 
something in me was attracted to that. You understand me? So I just say, whoa, whoa, it's me. It's in me, God. It's in me. All right. So I had to do some healing and some soul and allow God to heal that ugly stuff inside of me. All right. It ain't always them. It's them, but it can be you too. All right. Um, if you have not set boundaries, if you have not set boundaries, you got to feel it to heal it. You can't become numb. Right. Shame. Cause then you'll get into addictions. If you try to become numb, that's why a lot of people drink and do drugs and get into sexual um, deviancy and all this stuff because they don't want to feel it. They just want to get up under somebody else and think that that's going to feel it. You don't, you don't get over somebody by getting under somebody else. That's how you catch venereal diseases. And that's how you catch sexually transmitted demons too. All right. All right. All right. So there's a lot, if you have not unlearned, to relearn, you shouldn't be dating or marrying. Healing is about unlearning all that stuff that's in your subconscious mind that you learn. Uh, it's, it's unlearning. It's breaking generational curses. It's addressing the trauma to relearn again by Holy Spirit. To relearn. So it, when I, when I um, was born again, it was like I was a little child. I literally, It's like I had to learn how to walk. I had to learn how to talk. I had to learn... To how to um, acclimate back into the world because I was in in ICU, so I had to unlearn all that stuff and then be re, like reintroduced back into society. All right, um, you got to identify your toxic traits. You got to identify your attachment style. All right, if you haven't done it, you probably you probably shouldn't. All right, um, if you feel disempowered. All right, because you're just gonna find another narcissist. If you're an Ahab, you're just gonna find another. You're just gonna find a Jezebel. There cannot be a Jezebel without an Ahab that keeps them in power. If you feel disempowered, you because if you feel disempowered, you are going to witchcraft. People that feel disempowered after abuse go into witchcraft. If they don't let God heal it, if you feel disempowered and you don't allow Holy Spirit to heal you and to empower you through the word of God, that's when they find witchcraft because they're looking for power. They're looking for power. They're looking for they're looking for a way out. They're looking and they don't want to submit that pain to God. So witchcraft is easier. Divination is easier. Sorcery is easier. Playing mind games and, and, and dealing with tarot and all that stuff. That's easy. That's easy. It's easy to get into, right? Right, John, it is. We, um, you said shame is, I'm sorry, shame is the root of pride, addiction, and love of money. Yes. And that's all the things that narcissists love. They are prideful, Leviathan. They are addicted. They love mammon. And they will do anything to get it. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Right, Sophia, break the covenant uh, with those devil people. Repair, renounce, and rebuke them forevermore. Go for it. Be empowered and inspired for spiritual workers and healers. Our attraction was to cure. Right. So um, if you cannot recognize or discern healthy from unhealthy, stay single. All right now it's gonna take a little time okay everything doesn't and i have to say this as a caveat everything doesn't happen while you're single when you get married there are going to be other things you know deeper levels that you go into as i spoke about that before if you hate the opposite sex opposite sex stay single if you have resentment because if you now hate all men because of what one man or two men did to you stay single if you're going to become a man hater and a man basher, like stay single. All right. Or it, or now you hate the same sex. You understand? That's that's a narcissist. You'll become narcissistic. All right. So every man is not bad because the ones that you picked were. Every man is not bad. Every woman is not trashy because you picked a trashy one. All right. So, but if you hate the opposite sex now because, you know, of what somebody did to you, now you walk around bashing all men, all men, all men, all men. No, you're just, you're, 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 you're going to have a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're speaking that over yourself. I can't stand men now. Now you want to be a lesbian. Now you want to be a lesbian now. Now you want to be a lesbian. So you're not really a lesbian. You're not really a lesbian, but you you're gonna be a lipstick lesbian now. 
because of what men did. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you, them lipstick lesbians, them studs will do you wrong just like a man would. Do you understand me? Don't think because she taped her breast down and, and, you know, don't think that she won't do you wrong. Do you understand me? Don't think because she a, lis a lipstick lesbian that she won't do you wrong. Because some of these lipstick lesbians and these studs will do you just as wrong as a man would. Do you understand me? All right. It's not a listen. They'll do you wrong quicker than a man would. All right. It's the heart of a person. All right. And don't think, listen, same thing for brothers. All right. Same thing. All right. Ain't no, ain't no difference. Ain't no difference. Right. And that's what it is. That's you're opening the door. And that's exactly what it is. You're opening the door to homosexuality, bashing the same sex. And that's why you find them. You know, a lot of them are get molested by a man or something like that. Now they don't want, they don't want a man. It's because the spirit of homosexuality, it's a spirit. It was open. It was open. The door was open and you walked on in it because you didn't crucify them thoughts, you know, because it's spiritual. All right. All right. Um, if you hate the, if you hate the narcissist, just stay single. If you still hate the narcissist. Now I ain't saying you, listen, you got to forgive if you're a believer. You got to forgive. You know, it's in your best interest that you forgive if you want God to forgive. You don't have to forgive. I'll say that. But if you want God to forgive you, then you want to forgive. It doesn't make what they did right. It doesn't mean that you have to reconcile the relationship. It just means you're releasing them to God. You're not holding them in judgment. You're not being the judge of that situation. And it's it's releasing them. You know, it's releasing them from your spirit. All right. All right. Um, let's see. Let me hurry up so I can wrap this up. All right. Um, you hate the narcissist. Just, just have you ever been on a date with somebody um or talking to somebody and all they bring up is like their ex, their ex? Like, I only talk about my ex in the confines of this community. I, I don't care, Nana Neri. I, I couldn't care, couldn't care any less about that Negro than I do at this very moment. Uh, I wish him, do I wish him the best? Am I lying when I say that? Okay, God, I, um, I release him to you. I don't want to tell no lies. Like, do I wish him the best? I don't know if I do right now, but I, I release him. You know what I mean? I forgive him for what he did. I ain't going to sit here and lie to you though. Um, but have you ever, you know, that's the only time I talk about that. Like, I don't, I don't care about what a narcissist is doing. And I truly don't. Um, but, um, have you ever been and all they do is bring, like you're in a relationship or you're on a date and all they do is bring up their ex. You, you feel me? Like, that's all they do. And you sitting there like, that's so unattractive. Cause that means like, now if y'all are meeting and you're talking about it, you know, a, you know, a few times it's going to come up, right? It'll come up every once in a while, but when you meet somebody and that's all they do, oh, they great. Like that's all they have to talk about. Something in the buttermilk is not clean. All right. When you hate someone, they still have power over you. You never allow hate to control you like that. All right. I hate no one. I hate no one. All right. I hate no one. All right. And, and if you hate somebody that, that means that they still have a level of control over you. All right. Right. If you still have the narcissist, you're not healed. Hate is an emotion talking from uh, experience heal now. And that's being very real. Right. That's being very real. And I know how I, I forgive me. And that's what it is. When you don't forgive somebody, it's really that you're kind of mad at yourself. It's, it's you're projecting too. you're really mad at yourself for not heeding the warnings that you receive. You're really upset with yourself. And now the narcissist is not the only one that projects. People project too. We all project. We all project in different ways. It's just the narcissist projects their hate onto other people. But when you don't forgive yourself, you're not going to forgive um, the person either because you're really upset with yourself, right? Had renewed me, but I still feel scared sometimes that I don't ever want to be, uh, don't ever put anyone, anybody open to those demons and spiritual um, realm soul ties. You can cut those, right? Um, if you have not addressed your core wounds from childhood and beyond, listen, that, listen, it's going to show up in who you date. It's going to show up in who you marry. If you believe that another person can complete you or marry you, if you believe that once you get married, I'm going to be complete and this person's going to make me happy. Stay single. Marriage is not for you. Marriage is not for the faint of heart. You understand me? Amen. Wife in the spirit waiting on my kingdom husband. That's right. 
Right. Um, so no, listen, you got to find, you got to get out of idolatry. If you have not renounced idolatry, stay single. Cause you're just going to find yourself another idol in the form of a person and career and ministry. You'll just find, um, you, you, another degree. All right. You'll just find it. And so let the idolatry go. If you have not made God the chief cornerstone of your life as a believer, just stay single. If you don't have a relationship or foundation in Christ, you won't find it. Listen, it's not going to listen, make Christ your foundation. All right. Um, if you want revenge, all right, all that goes in there. Okay. Some people don't want marriage. Some people want companionship. Be honest with yourself about what you want. All right. Um, what else? Let's, what else before we get out of here? Um, let me see. Okay. So how narcissists keep you from your kingdom spouse? Narcissists are blessing blockers. Narcissists tie up your womb. And whether it's a natural womb, some people, uh, they're with the narcissist and they can't get pregnant. All right. Narcissists tie up your womb. All right. We're going to read this. Um, if you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to read Genesis 20 and one in a second. But narcissists tie up your womb. A lot of people, when they're with the narcissist, they can't even have children. Now, a lot of people have children with the narcissist, but a lot of people are barren when they're with the narcissist. And they think it's they think it's physiologically. And they will go to uh, IVF. They will go to um, doctors. Uh, they will go through adoption. They don't realize that this is spiritual. When your womb is tied, tied up, that's spiritual. Do you understand me? That's spiritual. It's not, it's not physiological. Now, you, gotta, you can rule physiological out, but it's spiritual at its core. All right? All right. Um, narcissists is not your soulmate. There's really no soul. There's no such thing as twin flames. It's demonic. All right. But they're not your soulmate. All right. Um, they're not here to love you. Narcissists are in, on assignment. When you're with a narcissist, you're like in a demonic trap house. You're in a facade of a marriage. And a narcissist keeps you tied up for years if you allow them to. They keep you focused on them, healing from them, ruminating on them, and idolatry, worried about them. Everything is about them. It's not even about God. It's about them. It's about how you can survive because you're now you're in survival mode when you're with the narcissist. So now you can't even live in peace and at ease anymore. You, you, don't, even, you don't even live in peace. You can't even focus on your purpose. How can you focus on your purpose when you're not even emotionally safe? Safety is a, whether you study Maslow's hierarchy of needs and all that, from a psychological perspective, safe, emotional safety is number one. So you cannot heal in the same place that makes you sick. And we have a lot of people that try to heal. You can try to do it. Um, will it work? It, I mean, you may have some measures of success, but you, you have to get out of that place. That's why it's best to go low contact and no contact so you can heal. Because you begin to see things in a different way, right? So a narcissist pulls you in to let you down hard. A, a narcissist is here to create demonic soul ties and wounds inside of you. Satan works to create wounds in childhood. A lot of people are carrying, a lot of people are children in adult bodies. They have not yet healed from the pain of when they were children and they think that success and, and, and mammon and, and titles and, and degrees can heal soul wounds. Can't nothing heal soul wounds, but soul healing by the balm of Gilead. Do you understand me? All right. So narcissists are here to create those soul wounds. As Prophet Quenisha said earlier, uh, the first narcissist was Satan. He absolutely was. Narcissist comes from the word uh, Greek, uh, from Greek mythology, but at its core, that's Satan personified. A narcissist is Satan personified in human form. A narcissist has all the characteristics of Satan himself. Do you understand me? Of Lucifer. I always say narcissists should actually be called Luciferians because that's what they are. They have the mind. They have taken on the embodiment of Satan. It's just they have flesh on them. And if you don't walk in spirit and in truth, you will confuse a narcissist for your soulmate. 
you will confuse the narcissist because you see their flesh, but you better stop seeing people with your flesh and you better become a discerner in these end times. You have to discern the spirit in which somebody come. You got to be like Jehu. Who do you come? How do you come in the spirit? Do you Are you friendly or are you a foe? You got to be discerning who people are in the realm of the spirit. Can't be around her looking at people's flesh. You'll get fooled. You'll get digmatized. Do you understand me? You'll be stigmatized because you're looking. You'll be bewitched because you're looking at somebody's flesh. You better start to discern who people are in the realm of the spirit. But narcissists create these wounds in childhood so that they carry on through your adulthood. That's the purpose of a narcissist. That's what Satan does. And then they pull you in with their tentacles. So now you're like an octopus spirit. It's like an octopus spirit. Their tentacles are so far in you, making it harder for you to leave. They start with your soul realm, appealing to your wounded inner child and your unhealed desires and curses upon you that you don't even know exist, but they do. And at this point, a narcissist knows you better than you know yourself. Do you understand me? All right. Then once they love bomb you or even play hard to get, now you are intrigued like a child. And now you get pulled into their superficial charm and to their web of deceit. All right. And to their web of deceit or whatever it is that appeals to you. Some people don't even like the narcissist when they meet, but eventually the narcissist wears them down. All right. And they actually listen. A narcissist actually hates you more if they have to chase you. All right. Because they really don't want to chase you. They want they want things. They want things that are hard in some cases because they want to break you down if you're strong. But they like easy targets. Let's be clear. All right. So uh, if they have to chase you, if you try to leave them and go back to them, man, you better, you better get ready. Hear me and hear me well by the word of God, by the spirit of God. If you go back to a narcissist, if you go back into the devil's den without clearance from the most high God, just prepare, be, be prepared because you're about to go 10 rounds in mortal combat. Do you understand me? You're about to get whooped around like the seven sons of Skeva. Because Beelzebub don't cast out Beelzebub. You understand me? So you about to, listen, if you leave a narcissist and you go back and you allow them to manipulate your emotions after you know what you know, God has shown you what you're dealing with and you think that you can play with this thing. Oh, get ready, baby. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because you're about to TKO. You about to go into some mortal combat round 10 and you're going to come out like a Tweety bird, like with them birds all around your head. You're going to come out. You're going to walk over, but you're going to limp back. I'm already telling you. I'm already warning you. This is for somebody because you're thinking about going back. You listen, the penis is calling you. The vagina is calling you. All right. And they got you. Look, they got you on the on the hotline and you thinking about going back to save your children. You think you're going back to save your marriage. Oh, just get ready because you about to go into some mortal combat. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to tell you how this going in, right? I'm going to tell you, either the narcissist is going to suck you back into a demonic contract somehow because they got to re-up that curse. They're going to suck you in so bad financially. They're going to suck you in so bad emotionally and physically that you won't even make it out this time. And then if you go back, all right, for some people, that's the case. And they just end up dying with that narcissist because the narcissist is going to siphon all that goodness out of them. So they're going to be like a shell of themselves. They're going to be like Oprah at the dinner table on color purple. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be just a shell of themselves. And then if you do, all right, if you do so happen to make it out, Oh, that thing is going to whoop you around before you make it out that door. That thing going to tag you. All them demons, Jezebel, Levite, they all going to tag tame up on you and they're going to whoop up on your head. I'm just telling you. I'm just I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to tell you what your local psychologist won't tell you. They are them demons about to about to TKO you. All right. So just get ready. Just go ahead. You go back. All right. It's going to be good for about two to three days. You're going to have two to three days of love bombing at the max. And then that narcissist is going to do something to let you know that they hated you all along. And then you're going to feel so daggone foolish. You're going to feel so daggone foolish because you sat in here. You listened to the videos. You even had a coaching session, probably. You listened. But you thought, I'm going to find out for myself. 
Some of you got to find out for yourself that poop stank. Some of you got to find out for yourself that a stove, that a, that heat produces fire. And you're going to feel it. You're going to feel every one of them flames because we warned you. We warned you not to play with the devil. We played with the devil. We touched the scales of Leviathan. We made it out. Now we're trying to warn you, but you got to find out for yourself. I ain't go back. I ain't one of them ones that had to go back seven times. No, I know that's some people. That's their testimony. They had to go back seven times. No, when God, listen, I listen, I learn quick. I'm a fast study. I'm a quick learner. I know that ain't everybody's testimony. But you who are hard-headed and that got to learn, that's that that's the way they learn. It takes them seven times to go back, and seven times they, they got to go back. But when an unclean spirit departs out of a man, it's seeking rest and finding none. And then it says, well, let me go back. Let me go back to the place in which I dwell. Because they think that you're their, you're their home. And if you mistake that as love, you're going to get whooped around. And them demons, the last state of the man is going to be worse than it was before. These demons ain't playing with you. Don't do it. Don't do it. But if you got to find out for yourself, I'm telling you, life has a way of showing us all. We just here, we just here, we just here to tell you the truth. We just here to tell you the truth. Some people, everybody don't make it out of a narcissistic relationship. Everybody doesn't make it out. We we are in here to tell the tales. Everybody doesn't make it out of this. I ain't, I won't, I will not. You understand? You go back, you go back this time. You're going to see what it's going to be. And you're going to remember the words. You're going to be like, dang, I remember on Saturday, January 13th at 256, at 156, this woman came on here and told me not to go back. You're going you gonna to remember. God, listen, he's going to put it right there. It's going to be right there. It's going to be right there in your cerebral. It's going to be right there in your brain. You're going to remember. You're going to remember this. You're going to remember this. I don't have to learn things to heart. No, me either. I ain't hard-headed. I ain't never been now. I ain't gonna say I ain't I ain't that hard head. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little I was a little hard head, but now now no 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 I don't play with the devil. I don't play with the devil. All right, all right, let me hurry up. I ain't gonna make it under three hours, Solomon. I just ain't gonna make it. Y'all all right. Um, all right, so the devil is able to wear you down. The narcissist is able to wear you down through guilt. So oh, I'm gonna unalive myself. No, if they say that, listen, a lot of times when a narcissist said it. A lot of times they don't do it. What they mean is I'm I unalive you. Then I'm unalive myself. Or I'm a, how many times have we seen? We saw that with Alicia Lofton, right? Her husband was threatening to kill himself and all that. No, he he unalived her. He unalived her. Do you understand me? Don't play with somebody who was who who hey, you suicidal. Let me call the suicide. Listen, call their bluff. Call the suicide hotline. You ain't no therapist. Call the call the, call the hotline. Call the hotline. Let them deal with that. All right. No, but what they want to do is use your emotions and that guilt to keep you in a demonic trap house. All right. All right. So now, all right. So now once they have you hooked on the dopamine and the serotonin and all that, you now that your soul is like legally tied to theirs in the spirit realm, now you're solidified. Even if there's no sex involved. All right. Now, spiritually, the enemy has a legal right to you and and you definitely are not going anywhere anytime soon. The narcissist knows it. You ain't going nowhere. The most you'll do is, is throw a temper tantrum. The most you do is cry and fuss and the most you're going to do is do that. They know you're not going nowhere. They call your bluff. They know you ain't going nowhere. The narcissist thinks that you'll never leave. So now that you are emotionally secured. Now, sexually, now they can tie you down financially, all right? They get you in some kind of legal contract, legal binding. You put them on their phone. You co-sign a car. You know, you do dumb things financially. You make dumb financial decisions when you're with a narcissist, all right? You, you, you fund their business. You have a business. Then you put your, their name on it. You, do, you make all these dumb legal decisions. That you know what I'm saying? You you co-sign on the car, you you buy them a car. I mean, just dumb decisions. You understand me? For an adult that's not your child. All right. So they get you in some kind of legal binding 
contract, all right, agreement, business, or they have a child, have a baby by me, building it, be a millionaire, all that bull crap, all right. Or if it's a woman, she'll get pregnant or you'll get her pregnant. All right. And now because your finances are tied in the wrong kingdom, you begin to lose things around you. Things start to come up missing. Like your sanity, your health, your looks, your weight, your friends, your support system. Sometimes the narcissist will steal your whole family. Sometimes the narcissist is such a good liar that your family, people in your family start to, now they didn't know you all your life. But somehow you get with this narcissist. Now nobody believe you. Nobody want to fool with you. Why? Because the narcissist right there telling lies about you. The narcissist begins to steal even your friends, your family. Sometimes they sleeping with your best friend. You don't even know. You thought it was your friend. It ain't your friend. All right. They begin to sleep. They'll sleep with your cousins, your cousins, your family. Sometimes I've seen narcissists sleep with people's own mother because both of them are two of the same. Usually the narcissistic mother wants to be you. The narcissistic mother wants your friends, wants your life, wants to live vicariously through you. She hates you. You understand me? All right. So remember now, now the narcissist has you. So now they're telling lies about you. Because remember, most people believe the first person that, that tells their story is the one that people, most people believe. Most people don't have discernment. So the narcissist knows to, to do a preemptive strike on you. They are already two steps ahead of you. How I know this? Because I lived this. I lived this. I didn't know all this back then. I didn't know that when I married the narcissist, he was already telling lies about, he was already pillow talking with other women, telling lies about me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that till the block got real hot. I didn't know that that's how they operate. So they're already telling lies about, oh, don't think, oh, don't think it's just, it was just me. There's already a smear campaign going on about you. It's already, it's already been in action. That's, that's a little narc insurance. That's a, that's narc insurance. So when you, so when things, cause they know things are going to crumble. So when they do, when things start to crumble, they're already 10 steps ahead of you. They didn't already laid out the smear campaign. They didn't already told people you was crazy. They didn't already laid the, they didn't already start gossiping about you. They already pillow talking with the new supply about you. They're already at work. They 10 steps ahead of you. So they are talking and you're not talking. Cause that's what we do. When we don't know what's going on. We get quiet. So they're talking. They're pillow talking with new supply and pillow talking with your family, pillow talking with their family, pillow gossiping about you of uh, things that you don't even know that you're aware. Cause you think it, they tell you, we keep things in the household. No, that applies to you. You keep things in the household. Because they know once they tell you that we're going to do it. Especially when we don't know what happens in the family stays in the family. No, what happens in your, for you, that the narc rules don't apply to the narcissist. It only applies to the people that they're in relationship with. Rules don't apply to the narcissist. It just applies to us mere mortals. So they're going to tell you these things, but they're not going to actually live by them. Why would they do that? They don't, they don't live by what they say. They're going to do everything that is totally contradictory to what they told you. That's why it's going to blow your mind when you find these things out. Because the narcissist told you that they weren't going to do. And they did exactly what they said they weren't going to do. So when you find out, it's going to blow your mind. Or maybe it was just me. So now the narcissist is talking. You're not talking. So they get to control the narrative. You're isolated. You ain't telling nobody. You, you don't even know who to tell. This is why this community is so important on your journey. Do you understand me? You have to find people who understand what you are going through. 
Because now you're isolated. You don't know who to talk to. The narcissist got all the people in, in the ear. You now you sit now. Then when you tell somebody, they like, oh well, you know, God hates divorce. And when you tell somebody, now they use the scripture against you. You know, uh, you know, the 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 covered spouse, you know, covers the uncovered spouse, the unbelieving, the believing spouse covers the unbelieving. Now they're trying to apply biblical principles of a, a demonic covenant. So now you don't even know if you can trust the people at the church. The people at the church don't understand narcissist abuse, they don't understand warfare a lot of times. So they telling you to stay and pray with somebody who's trying to kill you emotionally. So now you just you just you don't even know who to talk to because now you sound crazy. While the narcissist is running wild in the wind, acting carefree, and you are tied down trying to figure out what's going on, just trying to maintain day to day. So some people, they have to convince not to work. So now, financially, they got you again. Because now you out of the work workforce. And if they're controlling and abusive, they take any money that you have. And if you have a little change and you don't know better, you telling them all your ideas, your hopes and dreams. You may even start a business, but little do you know that the narcissist is five steps ahead of you. Stop oversharing because you want a friend. Stop oversharing. If you know somebody is narcissistic, listen, don't put their name on your business. Do you understand? If you know, if God has given you any inkling that this person may be a monitoring spirit, you don't overshare, you don't share things with people like that. It's unwise. I see people, they write books and then they go tell their narcissistic mammy, tell their narcissistic dad, I'm like, shut up. And these are people that I coach. I'm like, shut up but they want the validation. They're so, they want the, val they haven't reparented themselves and they want the validation. Not knowing, now the narcissist is about to go to work on you in the spirit. Now the is about to go to, to make sure that you never release that book, to make sure that you never fulfill your calling. Now they gotta up the warfare. Stop oversharing because you want approval from a deadbeat. Do you understand me? Because they're going to use your emotions to reel you back in to the cycle of abuse. All right. The narcissist, any narciss narcissistic relationship is built on the same principles. Kill, steal, and destroy. And if you don't know, if you don't deal with your the childhood wounds of guilt, if you don't deal with shame and codependency, now the guilt that you have from childhood is being transferred into your relationships. And now you go searching for what is familiar, repeating the same cycle until you break it. A narcissist's job is to waste your time, your good years to keep you in the cycle of abuse. It's to keep you and your children under the same curses that are in our bloodline. Narcissists are the spawns of Satan. Oh, she do hard. Huh? This, this is a psychological disorder you lost in the sauce. When I say that they are in the embodiment of Satan, they have all the traits and the characteristics of Lucifer. You must understand what this is. A narcissist is like a heat-seeking missile do you understand me? They're searching for something. They are like the Terminator. They only want to be around others they benefit from, for image, for money, for resources, to waste your time, to appear as loving. They're not loving. And I don't know if anybody ever told you this. There are spiritual, emotional, financial, physiological consequences to marrying the wrong person. There are blessings for marrying the right person. There are either blessings or there are either curses. Choose wisely and you do get to choose. Do you understand me? So in Genesis 21 and 18, 
Yes, there are consequences. There are absolute consequences, okay? You can you can marry whoever you want to. But you got to listen, if you're wise, go to God about everybody. Everybody. Do you understand me? In Genesis 20 and 18, I'm going to read cuz I want you to understand that when you can't have children, when things are just not going right in your life, I want you to understand the the implications of having the wrong people around you, it's biblical. It's not personal. It's spiritual. All right. So Genesis 20, if you have your Bible, turn with me to your Bible. Now, Abraham moved from there in the region of Negev and lived between Kadesh and Shur. For a while, he stayed in Gerar. And there Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. Then Abimelech, king of Gerar, and I'm probably saying that wrong, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Don't play with married people. Get in there, done that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. God came to Abimelech. In a dream, I don't care if they say I'm divorcing, you know, my wife, my husband, you're as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. You are as good as dead. Do you understand me? That's God. Now, Abimelech had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent na nation? Did he not say, Abraham said, she's my sister. And then she also said they lied because she was beautiful. And Abraham said, you know, I want you to lie and say you're my sister. Because if I say you're my wife, they'll kill me. But Sarah also said, he's my brother. Both of them wrong. I had done this with a clear conscience and clear hands, Abimelech said. Then God said to him in a dream, yes, I know you did this in a clear conscience. And so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I have not let you touch her. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. You don't play with God's prophet. And he will pay, pray for you and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all who belong to you will die. Early the next morning, Abimelech summoned all his officials. And when he told all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, and uh, said to uh, Abraham, what have you done to us? Have I wronged you that you brought such great guilt upon me and Abraham? What is your reason for doing this? And Abraham said, I said to myself, there, there is surely no fear of God in this place and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God had me wander from my father's household, I said to her, this is how you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say he is my brother. So then Abimelech brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham. And when he returned Sarah, his wife to him, Abimelech said, my land is before you. Live wherever you like. To Sarah, he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife. Listen to this. His wife, his female slaves. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech. He healed Abimelech's wife. He healed Abimelech's female, uh, you know, uh, concubines or, the, or the, the servants so they could all have children again. For the Lord had kept all the women in Abimelech's household from conceiving because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. And I hope somebody is getting this. God will tie up your womb. It may be spiritually, not, and not God tying it up. Your sin has tied it up. By allowing people, the wrong people around you, by being in demonic covenants, whether it's a natural womb or a spiritual womb, 
That means that you may not even give birth to your vision, to the vision God placed inside of you. Because when you are tied to the wrong person, things get shut off. A narcissist is like a valve. All right. They're like a shut off valve. They block your blessings from coming through, even when God wants to bless you. Do you understand me? All right. Another, for those of you who need more, that's deep. My God, isn't it? Pastor Ezra? It's deep. The wrong person around you can tie up your womb. So when you see people in the family not marry generation after generation after generation get to the root of that something in the buttermilk ain't clean when you see people not having children not being able to conceive it's spiritual get to the root of that when you have people in your house that are not your wife or your husband things will begin to come up missing because you're tied to someone that is cursed and is bringing curses upon them and upon you, do you understand me? There are dangers to being unequally yoked. There are dangers to lying. There are dangers to having people around you who should not be around you. Let's go to Genesis 26 and 35. I think I got two more points. When Esau, Genesis 26, 34 and 35. Let me put it up here. All right. 30, 26, 34 and 35. All right. When Esau was 40 years old, he took Judith, the daughter of Beery, the Hittite, to be his wife and Bas, Basmith, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. And they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebecca. And I read this in this is called WWW fourth, fourth onward or CC. And this is what they wrote. These are not my words right here. This is what they wrote. These seem like two simple verses, but they carry huge significance. Esau married two Hittite women. These marriages made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. Don't you know who your children marry can make life bitter? Who you marry can make life bitter for your children. And likewise, it can make life bitter for you because you, that's what you model. So this could be a personality issue. This is what this, this uh, website wrote. And that maybe these two women were annoying to Rebecca. After all, we heard stories about how difficult some in-laws can be, especially when there's a personality class. But the larger issue is that Esau was rebelling against God's design and against his family's design for marriage in two key ways. Are y'all with me? First of all, eight, both Abraham and Isaac have modeled a monogamous marriage between one man and one wife for life in accordance with God's original design. So when people try to get you into polygamy, that wasn't God's original design. All right. Well, that's what was allowed, but that's that wasn't God's design. God gave Adam one wife. While Abraham slept with Sarah's handmaiden, this was culturally under, to be understood different from him from marrying her. Right. He didn't marry. Or, yeah, this was culturally understood. And both practice, both Esau's father and grandfather remain faithful to their one wife all the days of their life. Esau is upsetting the boat by marrying more than one wife. Some people today are unfortunately trying to follow Esau's example by having numerous sex partners and even trying to legalize polygamy as an acceptable form of marriage. However, this is not only sinful, but unhealthy and will lead to much strife in the family. Secondly, Esau is violating God's and his family's design for marriage by marrying outside of his people. outside of his people. It wasn't about race. It was about covenant. You have to know what you are marrying into. It was not about race. It was about covenant. Do you remember just a few chapters earlier, how many hoops Abraham was willing to go through so that his son would marry a woman from his own family? The longest chapter in the book is dedicated to the story of Abraham's servant, finding a wife for Isaac from their family line. Yet Esau doesn't seem to care how important and significant marriage is. He just goes and grabs some local girl to marry and then another. Being that these women were Hittites, they would not have worshiped the true and living God. 
they would have followed after the false gods of the land and they would try to lead their husband even further astray from Yahweh. The person you marry has more influence on your spiritual journey than any other person on this earth. What's more, I praise God. The person said, I praise God from a young age. He taught me how important it was to remain faithful to my wife, to love her, and to be only sexually active with her. Our world would be better off if young people understood God's design for marriage and a covenant relationship between one man and one wife for life. Instead, our culture has followed the way after Esau. We don't hold marriage and uh, the marriage bed in high esteem and encourage a multiplicity of sexual partners living with people before we marry, just dating, just out here, just doing whatever we want to do. We don't think that relationships need to be between two people of like minded belief systems. And we re and we are reaping the punishment for allowing our actions as we witness countless relationships fall apart and countless consequences of sexual infidelity on our young people. Who you marry has generational impact. This has not been taught in the church as, as it should be. All right, and this is me talking. Superficial factors don't matter as much. When we marry, now it's it's a spiritual covenant. The new covenant is a spiritual covenant. We are not supposed to marry outside of the kingdom of God. You're supposed to marry somebody who is faithful and in covenant with God, and that ain't a narcissist. Do you understand me? Who you marry has generational impact. You are either coming together to shake up the kingdom of darkness or you are becoming a product of the kingdom of darkness and your marriage is going to produce spawns of the kingdom of darkness do you understand me this was not to, to and don't feel condemned this ain't no message of condemnation all right but we have to understand that our our choices have impact now, if you did it, you know, you bring your children under the Lordship uh, spiritually. I have messages deep on that. So we can see what Jacob and we can see what Jacob and, and Esau. We can see with King Solomon, the consequences of being married to the wrong women and how it pulls you. And men, men, you, we really, you really have to understand this. Men have to, now women have to understand, men, you got to really understand this. You have much more, God places much more responsibility on you for a reason. We see how King, how Solomon, how Samson was destroyed. And because a lot of our men aren't spiritually grounded, they get led astray by the woman's bloodline by the woman's false gods. If your wife and your woman is not rooted in God, you need to run away because she will lead you and your children astray. That's why God wanted people, us marrying people from the tribe of Judah. This is why, all right, now it's a spiritual covenant. You Listen, you cannot be un you cannot afford to be unequally yoked with somebody who is not from the kingdom of heaven. You can't afford that. God bless you, uh, strategin, uh, strategin X. God bless you. May God return that to you over and above measure. God bless you. You can't marry, you can't afford to marry the wrong woman, brother Tyree. We can't afford it. This is generational. We must teach this to our children. People are out here getting married and shacking up and doing all these things like it's nothing. No fear of the Lord, no reverence for his guidance. God didn't put these, God, the, these instructions in the Bible to be mean, quite the contrary. It's because he loves us. 
There's no reverence for his guidance. There's no reverence, no healthy fear of the Lord these days. And it's showing and showing up in our relationships. That's right, Dana. The criteria must include more than warning, worried, warming a church blue, church pew. Make sure he's in she, right. That used to be there. That was the criteria. Make sure they go to church. No, devils go to church every Sunday. They sit on pews. They're on committees. They're in the pulpit. We have to have some discernment. Right. So now it's just do as you will. And then people want God to bless it. God does not bless every union. Just like he does not accept every form of worship. He does not accept every union. Some are holy and some are unholy matrimony. You will know that by the fruit it bears blessings and curses. We cannot bless what is inherently cursed. Psalms uh, 1, 11 and 5 says, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. We got to be able to tell the truth about these things. And don't mistake a prophetic word as, as you know, um, you know, the green light to do whatever you want to do. I've heard people say, you know, uh, 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 you know, they, they get married to the wrong people based off of a prophecy that they heard. People are out here marrying the wrong person based off a prophecy that they would get married to a man in a green suit on Tuesday. He would be at the bus station on Tuesday. And when you see him, he will look at you and the wind will blow in the movies and you'll be gone in the wind. You'll be gone in the wind. You'll be gone with the wind. Fabulous. Like Kenya Moore, Scarlett O'Hare. That's a lie. Every prophecy must be tested. Every prophecy must be tested. It must be confirmed by the word of God. Even me tested. I've seen people get led astray because of what was in their hearts. Do you understand me? You can get led away by a prophet, by a prophecy. Do you understand me? And if your marriage is built on sexual, sexual immorality, God didn't send it. If your message is, your marriage is built on deception, God didn't send it. Man, listen, out here getting full. Do you understand me? Out here getting full. If your marriage is built on seduction and seducing spirits and bewitchment and control, and manip God didn't send it. God may have allowed it because you wanted it, but it doesn't mean that it was sanctioned by him. We must seek the Holy Spirit. God says what he has joined together, let no man separate. God didn't put no demonic, you were no narcissist. You can, you can make up in your mind that he did, but he didn't. And you got to understand, demons want to be legalized. Demons want to be legalized. And one of the best way to do one of the best way to keep a child of God from never fulfilling their purpose is to put them in bed with the spine of Satan and then fall for it. How many people have fallen for it and stayed in it and thought that they were doing the right thing? So when I hear people say stay in abuse, I know that they don't understand legalities. They don't understand how the spiritual realm works. I'm not talking to flesh. We're dealing with spirits. Spirits want access. They want control. The narcissist wants access to your soul. This is spiritual. All right. So there are dangers in being unequally yoked. And you got to understand God's design for marriage. This is his covenant. It's made in his image and Satan wants to distort that. All right. Satan doesn't like that because because godly marriages produce strong families and strong families produce strong neighborhoods, strong neighborhoods produce strong communities, strong communities produce strong schools, churches, regions, territories, countries, principalities, nations, and it has global impact. God designs, builds, and sustains the, and, it's, and it's designed for kingdom building, for generational impact, for generation, generational wealth, 
generational abundance. But see, divorce and abuse lead, is sin. All right? So it leads you into rebellion, which produces lack and poverty. I'm not talking about divorce to godly people. I'm talking about um, or, or marriage to godly people. Narcissists are not godly people. We must be able to, to discern who the Bible is talking to. Baby mamas and baby daddies produces poverty. Sin produces poverty. Obedience produces wealth and abundance. And wealth is not always financial. You understand me? Satan's goal for marriage is to destroy the institution of marriage and God's design for it. So there are dangers in being unequally yoked. There are, listen, you got to pay attention to the red flags. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what, what partnership does righteousness have to do with lawlessness? What fellowship does light have to do with darkness? How can two walk except they agree? If you are walking with a narcissist, there's darkness in you that needs to be examined. I say that because there was darkness in me that had not been examined. I only talk about what I know about. And it should, and, and people try to do everything they can to bypass God's system. Everything that they can, everything that they can to bypass God's system. Why don't you care about being unequally yoked? Why, why do you want to marry somebody who doesn't worship your God? Why don't you want to marry somebody who worships your God? Why would you want to marry somebody who worships Buddha? If you're a believer, if you're a follower of the way, if you're a follower of Yeshua, of Christ, how, how can you marry someone who doesn't honor your God? Why don't you care about being unequally yoked? Why? Because you're an idolatry and idolaters only want what they want. When you love God, you don't yoke with somebody who doesn't. When you love somebody, you don't yoke with somebody who don't love what you love. Now you may respect them. You, 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 you have different, but you don't yoke with them. If some. I don't, I wouldn't yoke with somebody like little Nas X. Why would I do that? Because I know he hates my God. He mocks my God. Why would I get with somebody who wants my worship? Why would I, unless I was unhealed. I did that when I was unhealed. But when you love God, you don't yoke together with someone who doesn't. I, I, but when you're an idolater, you will. Dating someone of another faith is foolish. Do people do it? Absolutely. How can you, how, how can your foundation, how, you don't serve the same God. And I know the world has told you it's okay. Love is all you need. Who told you that? Who told you that? Where's that written? No, you need more than love. You need wisdom. You need God. You need godly foundation and godly principles because you cannot be in a three-course strand with God and Satan. I don't care how hard you try. So how do you recover from all this? You got to covenant with God. You got to covenant with God. You got to say, God, for you I will live, for God I will die. And you got to ask Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Believe that he rose and died again on the third day. And you got to go to renouncing those false gods. See, a lot of people are false converts. We're, we're starting to see the false converts. They're falling out of the woodwork. A lot of people are falsely converted. They said, they said the so-called sinner's prayer, but they did not renounce their gods. They did not renounce their false gods. They did not renounce their ancestral gods. They did not renounce their cultural gods. They did not renounce the narcissists. They did not I, renounce their idols. 
and it's going to manifest. So you got to renounce those gods, those false gods, false gods, small gods. You got to ask God to heal you spiritually. And then you seek soul healing. All right. Now you be kind. You be, you hold yourself accountable during this, this healing process. And then you understand, you understand that abuse has profound effect on people. It can leave scars. All right. It leads you to doubt your worthiness and whether you're capable of having a loving relationship. But I'm here as a witness that even there is love even after abuse. God says that he loves the brokenhearted and he binds up every one of those wounds. Repentance will lead repentance. Conviction is supposed to lead to repentance. And repentance is supposed to lead to you lead you back to reconciliation in God. That's the purpose of, re, of repentance. It's to reconcile you back to God, to put you back in right standing with God, to make you a joint heir to the blessings of God. But you can't have the blessings of God while holding the hand of Satan. Do you understand me? And then you got to do your inner work. You got to do your work and find communities that are like this, that are doing soul healing. It's not enough that you just leave. I see people that just leave every day. I see people that leave a narcissist and, and five years later, they are the still the same person. They are actually worse off. That ain't God. That ain't God. That ain't God. Nowhere in the Bible did God remove people out of their situation without restoring them back. Nowhere. Nowhere. It's not even biblically possible. It's not possible. God will never leave you or lead you out of a situation without a plan to restore you. But if you don't follow his plan, you won't be restored. If you don't address the wounds, there's no restoration. Oh, I, when you leave, it's not enough that you leave. When you leave Egypt, you must now get Egypt out of you. And too many people just stay, they leave Egypt, but their mind is still in Egypt. Their heart is still in Egypt. Now they're like Lot's wife, turning back, turning back. That's why, listen, that's why people go back because they left Egypt, but Egypt didn't get out of them. So they returned to a cruel taskmaster. They return because it's familiar. And for them, the devil they know is better than the one they don't. God bless you, Coach Terrica. All right. And then you got to know whether you are married or not, you are enough. We will not make marriage an idol. Marriage is not the end all be all. Listen, salvation is. Enduring until the end is. All right. We will not make marriage an idol. All right. We, we won't. All right. And then you got to identify your triggers. God bless you, Abra. I'm a stronger woman because of you, uh, God. Oh, and God bless you. God bless you too, Abra. God bless you. All right. You got to identify those triggers and work through them. You got to do this work. This is work. Healing is the, is the hardest thing that I have ever done but it's so worth it. It's so worth it, but it's not something that, that comes easy. It's, it doesn't come natural to us to face us. It doesn't come natural to us to heal. So it, it must be something that you are committed to doing. I am committed to this work. All right. I have the grace for this work. And that's only because of my God, because I am obedient to him. And obedience is better than sacrifice. So you got to be committed to God and committed to your healing. You got to identify those triggers and work through them. All right. You got to let the fantasy go. People, people are not so, you know, some people, they're mad at the narcissist. But they're mad because they got drawn into the fantasy of what was supposed to be. And a lot of people don't want to let the fantasy go. 
And this is why they ask questions like, well, can a narcissist be saved? And they try to say the narcissist, let it go. People, I mean, let it go. Let the fantasy go. That's God's job. It's not yours. All right. And then trusting yourself starts with trusting God and then trusting yourself. When I was, you know, coming out of this, I realized, I told God, like, I don't know how to trust you. Like, I'm scared to get hurt again. And he said, give me your heart. And so I gave God my heart. I give God my heart every day. So it's not that I trust people. I can be fooled too. Any of us can be fooled. Don't let somebody say, oh yeah, I can recognize. Or not. Man, these things are covert, manipulative. They're shapeshifters. I don't trust people that say, oh yeah, I can recognize. I can recognize the narcissist. I know him with my eyes closed. I'm, I'm not that prideful. Any of us could be fooled. So I don't trust. It's not that I trust me. I trust God to tell me. I trust in my discernment. I trust in God because he's a shield. He shields me from, from, from things. So he will tell me through dreams, through visions, through warnings. He will tell me through word of knowledge. He will tell me, he will speak to me and tell me when somebody's heart is not right. And it's my job to pay attention. So I trust my God to lead me. This is why I don't listen to people that listen to self-aware narcissists. Lost in the sauce. Lost in the sauce. You want to listen to Satan, a voice of Satan, talk about Satan. That's because you don't trust the word of God to tell you. You don't trust in God enough to tell you. And a lot of times it's just like the prophetic. They don't really know God's voice. They don't know God for themselves. So they're, they're willing to sit at the feet of Satan to tell them how Satan operates. They're willing to sit at the feet of false prophets. Do you understand me? They're willing to do that because they don't know how to hear God for themselves. You And, and it's because they, they don't, they don't want to spend time with God, really. So they want you. They want you to be their eyes and ears. No, if you get in a relationship with God, God will talk to you just like he talked to me. Do you understand me? But trusting, trusting again starts with trusting God and trusting him to heal you. I get hurt. My heart gets hurt. People betray me. You understand me? But I also know that that's part of the process to take me to my next level. You understand me? So I know I believe God in his word when he says all things work out for those who love the Lord and have been called according to, I believe God at his word. If you betray me, God going to get you. If you lie on me, God going to get you. If I lie, God going to get me. He going to rebuke me. That's why I live a life of repentance every day. Because every day I'm sure I do something. You understand me? But I trust God to heal me from whatever people do. I don't have to walk around shell shocked. Now, for a while, you gonna when you get out, you gonna walk around shell shocked and body rock because you are. But the more you allow God to heal you, you don't have to walk around uh, watching the five ways and the ten signs. You going the Holy Spirit gonna start to tell you things, and you are gonna begin to trust yourself. The gaslighting will begin to wear off the more that you get built up in God. And now you don't have to take somebody else's word. And when somebody tries to gaslight you, you won't fall for the okie doke. No, nah, baby, I ain't falling for that. I know who I am. I know what like, the word of God says. You cannot gaslight me. Learning the five ways and the 10 signs won't keep you from a narcissist. This is spiritual. So you got to be clear about who you are and you find out your identity through the word of God. And then if you're not married, keep your clothes on. And if you're married, listen, hear me by the spirit of God. If you are not married to your kingdom spouse, keep your clothes on. And if you're married to a demon carrier, still keep your clothes on unless you want the demon carrier's demons. That's for somebody. Now, if you want their demons, keep sleeping with them. Then. Keep sleeping with them. The, the principles, listen, you cannot apply biblical principles to a demonic covenant. All right. All right. First Corinthians 7, 3 says the husband should give his gift to his wife, her conjugal rights. Likewise, the husband to her wife, that's for a kingdom marriage. That ain't for you in a demonic trap house. You listen, you, we have to be able to exegete scripture. The Bible is written for believers, followers of the way. 
You cannot apply biblical principles to a demonic covenant or courtship. What God has joined together, God did not join you with this thing. That means I cannot, I cannot divorce Solomon for any old reason lawfully. He cannot divorce me for any old reason. That's why God says that he hates divorce. Because the men were shellacking their wives and putting them away for any old reason. They got old, they put them away. It does not, the word, the, the word of God is for believers who follow God in spirit and truth. It is not applied to, to abusers and adulterers, unions that are not of God. Lest you repent, then you're reconciled. Now, can a kingdom marriage be under attack? Absolutely. Some people are married to narcissists or, or, or not married to narcissists and have experienced infidelity. Usually that's a bewitchment or a lustful desire or, or healing that was needed that was not addressed prior to the marriage. And a lot of men have been led out of marriages, even kingdom marriages, and women could be, at the hand of a Delilah that is on a, a, a mission to destroy marriage. All right. So some women have been led astray from a God fearing man to a narcissistic warlock, a deceptive kind of disguise because of their own unhealed trauma and desires. It is up to the person to decide. It is up to the person to decide if they want to work on that or not. So don't confuse or, or confuse or confound a kingdom marriage with a demonic covenant. They are not the same. And what the church has done has, has lumped them all into one category. They And this is why people get confused about abuse. This is why people get confused about adultery. This is why people get confused about, about spiritual warfare. They get confused because they're not able to hear by the word of God. They're not able to discern who God was talking to. And so what the world, the church has done has lumped all marriages as if they were equal and try to apply kingdom principles to demonic covenants, which has a lot of people bound in demonic trap houses that they think are marriages. These are destiny destroyers. These are dream killers. These are Decepticons. And if you don't have God and discernment, you'll be duped too. All right. And I've come, I've seen people convince themselves that they are staying for the children. Be honest with yourself. You ain't got to lie to me, Craig. You ain't got to lie to me. Look in the mirror and tell yourself the truth so that you can be set free. Most of the time, the children are telling you to leave. The children want you out of that trap house. They see you sad. They see you angry. They can sense that. They're going to grow up with that. That's spiritual. That's spiritual. You're spiritually passing. You're, you're embedding that in their DNA. So what, what, what are you doing to your children spiritually and emotionally? Think about that. Why you're telling yourself that God wants you to stay for the children. You're setting them up for future narcissistic relationships and they'll have to break the curses that you don't. Don't lie to yourself. You can lie. Listen, you can lie to me. I don't believe you, but don't, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Keep it 100 with the person in the mirror. Do you understand me? Keep your listen. I'd be like, who told you that? The devil? All right. Marriage is a beautiful thing and it's a gift from God. The Bible says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. It does not sit on its own way. It is not irritable. It is not resentful. It is not wrote. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes in all things, endures in all things, never ends. The end love, not lust, not lust. So don't date your trauma. Don't think that marriage is a band-aid. Marriage is not a band-aid. Don't think that some people think if I have a child, oh, you know, oh, it's gonna make the marriage. Who, who in their right mind thinks like that? Nobody. Oh, if I had his baby, you're you're definitely you're not in your right mind. And I say that with the love of God. You are outside of your mind. I, I don't. I, I never understood that rationality, and I'm glad I don't. Mar a baby is not a band aid for a bad relationship. All right, marriage and children do not save a relationship that's doomed from the start. You understand me? 
All right. All right. So um, I'll pray this message. Bless you. Let me answer your question. To, Hi, Shannon. How do you test the prophecy with the word of God? Um, a lot of times prophecies are, are going to be like confirmation, um, you know, and then, you know, there's a scripture um, my apostle gave me. And I said this in the last one. Um, it's in Timothy. Like you go to war with the prophecy. Right. Um, so when we receive prophecies about say we receive a prophecy about like somebody is going to get hurt. Right. You're supposed to go to war against that. When we hear prophecies of doom and gloom, now some things are written, some things are, are going to happen, right? Um, it's just it's just scriptural. They have to come to pass. Um, that's just God's word. But when we hear a prophecy that's bad, we're supposed to go to war. Like a dream is a, is a prophetic warning, right? When you see that, um, you're supposed to go to war against that. You're supposed to pray scripture and you're supposed to ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? Right. So that's you testing that prophecy. And then God will either he'll send somebody to confirm it. He'll give you a word of knowledge. He'll give you a vision and you're going to know that it was from God. All right. But a lot of people and you. But this takes communion with God. It takes communion. Right. So a lot of times um, people can't hear God because they're in sin. They're in sin. And when you're with a narcissist, it blocks out. This is why I say, like, I spend a lot of time alone. Um, I spend a lot of time, um, not alone, but um, I don't like a lot of people around me a lot of times. that That's how I'm introverted because I need my signals. I need my lines clear to be able to hear from God. And if when there's too much interaction, when there's too many voices, you know, um, you know, my signals get crossed. So I will listen to wise counsel, but at the end of the day, I'm going to listen to what God tells me. And he's going to confirm his word through word of knowledge, through a vision, through a dream, through another prophet. He's going to confirm his word in, in many different ways. Um, and then when I when I hear it, I know it because I have peace about that. When I, when I don't have peace about something that somebody told me or a situation, I know that because why? Because first of all, I'm connected to God. So I know his peace. I know his shalom and I know when it's when I when my spirit is vexed, I know when something in the buttermilk is not clean. Now I know that. But it takes time and it takes learning how God works and it takes sitting with him to be able to discern that. So you test the prophecy first by listen, by taking it to God, by by asking him to, you know, either confirm or deny this word. Um, you know, and then he's gonna either send you a word of knowledge or vision. So um, I hope that helps. Um but a lot of people, they just hear things and they just, you know, if it's already confirmed, then you come into agreement with it. You can come into agreement with it. But if God has not confirmed that, then you you take that and you test it by the word of God. All right. Um, I hope that um, makes sense. All right. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, Regina. Uh, that was before you can apply biblical principles to an ungodly covenant. Right. And that's what a lot of people do. That's why a lot of people are in demonic marriages. They're trying to apply the word of God to something that is ungodly. And, and it's like, they're almost trying to bypass, um, you know, the system. And then because people have, don't know the word of God for themselves, they keep falling for the okie doke. They stay in these demonic covenants um, that are not of God. God bless you, uh, Fruit Inspector and Brother Tyree. God bless you both. Thank you, Miss Shannon. Powerful teaching. God bless you. God bless you both. And may God return those seeds to you over and above measure. That's right. We're spiritual beings having a human um, experience. Absolutely. Let me read a couple. That's right. Keep your pants zipped up. It's not worth it. It's literally not work uh, uh, worth it. Right. Did I say did I misspeak or something? Jacob and his twin brother Esau were born to Isaac and Rebecca after 20 years of marriage. Absolutely. Thank you for um that, Arne. Did I say something different? Um, that's what listen. If I did put go read it, I'll put the prescription up there, go read it. But thank you for um putting that up there, our name. Um, right. The kids want you out. The children need you to leave because they are suffering too. And I I went through that. And we used to, I used to tell my mother all the time, like, let let's go, like you will make it, but she didn't think that she could make it on her own then she ended up becoming the very thing that um we were fighting against you know um so what could you do what could you do as a child nothing you can't do nothing but cry and and you know that's what we, we like leave let's go with if that person if that parent doesn't think that they can make it and a lot of times fi it's financial they is well and it's not it's financial but it's it's mental it's financial but it's once you align your mind 
you align your mind, there's nothing that you can do. But their mind doesn't think that they can make it. Once you make it up in your mind that you're going to make it out, ain't no devil in hell can keep you in a narcissistic, demonic trap house. Do you understand me? You understand me. All right. All right, y'all. Let's say a um, couple of, uh, let's say a prayer. Because I forgot the um, the video with me and Solomon is about to premiere here at three o'clock. So y'all head right on over there after we get done here. Powerful teaching. Thank you, Providence Quenisha. Thank you for streaming. I really appreciate you for being such a kingdom helper um, and a kingdom announcer. Um, you are a blessing from God. God honors covenants. Um, make sure to break uh, evil covenants in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And she has videos. Solomon has videos. We have videos on this. All right. It's the live streams. Watch the live streams. Amen. Oh, good, uh, Stephanie. God bless you. All right. Um, so let's see. So if you want to say, and I got this out of Francis Miles' book, um, Issuing Divine Restraining Orders from the Courts of Heaven. I'm big on the courts of heaven. All right. I have videos on, on teachings that go deeper um, into the courts of heaven if you want to learn. And there's I have books on the courts of heaven. I think they're all about Francis Miles, if I'm not mistaken. So Heavenly Father, I repent for any and everything that will be stopping my destiny from becoming a reality. And I'm going to say this, I renounce and I reject the counterfeit marriage. I reject and renounce uh, the covenant, uh, any any demonic covenants. You say that if you came into agreement, you set a vow to come into that, then you have to break it. You have to break that. All right. And then you have to covenant yourself to the most high God. All right. So I renounce all ungodly oaths, covenants, decrees, soul ties, and generational curses. Heavenly Father, as I stand in the court of heaven, I present myself as a living sacrifice. This is after you repent, holy and acceptable before you, according to Romans 12 and 1. If I'm talking too fast, go back and rewind it. So I got to get out of here. All right. Lord, wash me with your blood so that Satan has no legal footing to resist any divine restraining order I need from your Supreme Court. If you want to win, court cases, court cases are one in the spiritual. If you listen, go and watch Solomon's message from Wednesday. Um, I, I shared testimonies that he and I had. These were battles that we have been fighting in the spiritual. Heavenly Father, it is my heartfelt desire to divorce myself from the spirit of Ahab, torment, Jezebel, jealousy, murder, envy, I give back everything and anything from the kingdom of darkness. I only want the blood of Jesus. Um, I only want what the blood of Jesus secured for me on the cross. I give back anything demons and demonic altars would claim that they gave me. This is why you have to anoint your house and do house cleaning. Okay. Heavenly Father, I also repent for covenants with demons that existed in my ancestral bloodline. I ask that any agreement with demons that exist in my life would be rescinded. I break their legal rights in the mighty name of Jesus. You cannot fight demons you are in covenant with. All right, Lord, any demonic right to claim me and my bloodline is now dismissed before your courts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for revoking these demonic covenants and altars in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I now ask that a divine restraining order against my abusive and violent spouse or ex-spouse be issued on my behalf by the courts of heaven. That's how I got a divine restraining order, by petitioning the courts of heaven. That's how I received a 10-year order of protection, by petitioning the courts of heaven. You want victories in natural courts, you fight them in the spiritual realm. In Jesus' name I pray. I decree and declare that any and all forms of abuse is the devil orchestrating against my life and they are now canceled in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I receive this divine restraining order by faith right now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that you shall fulfill all the days of my life that you wrote in my book of destiny long before you created me in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are in a healthy marriage, praise God. All right. Praise God for healthy marriages. 
All right. We, and we, we are like a three core strand that is not easily bro broken. All right. And then for those of you who are in demonic marriages, we continue to pray for you. I don't pray against anybody's will. If you want to stay in that, stay in that. Um, I just pray that God's mercy be up on you and your children and your bloodline. For those of you who have come out that are dealing with broken heart or you're healing and restoration, God is a restorer. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I break every curse. For those of you who are in agreement, I break every curse of idolatry, sexual immorality, divorce, untimely death, death of dreams, stagnation, guilt, shame, infirmity, and sickness off of your body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break every curse of witchcraft and destruction over your body in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every sickness that is in your body leave your body right now by the power and the blood of Jesus. Every, and you can say this, I command every every pain, every infirmity, every sickness, every curse to leave my body. I come out of agreement with the curses in my bloodline. You got to understand what the enemy meant for evil. God will turn it around for your good. I rebuke the counterfeit. Never be in the same place where they left you. Never let where they left you be the same place that they find you. It's time to level up. Do you understand me? Know that God is a course corrector. Abuse and love do not exist. You can love again after abuse. Make your pain count for something. How tragic would it be to go through abuse and that be the end of you? That That's pain for nothing. Make your pain count for something. And that's giving the narcissist too much power over you and your life. No longer give anyone the power to make or break you. Just because you spent a long time making a mistake doesn't mean that you continue to stay in it. See, God in his word, he is the master orchestrator. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. There is a volume written about you and the narcissist should not be your whole book. You don't make the narcissist your whole book. You write the story of your life. God is the author, but you have the pen. Do you understand me? What legacy will you leave? What legacy will you leave for your children? Will it be that you met a narcissist and that's all it is and that's all they wrote? There is a story being written about you. Uh, hallelujah. Will it be I went through narcissist abuse and I became a victim? I thought I couldn't get out, so I stayed there for the rest of my life. Is that is that your story? That's your story. You got the pen. You got the pen. What legacy does that leave? I became a victim and I thought I couldn't get out. So I stayed there for the rest of my life or I went through narcissist abuse. I acknowledge where I am is not where I stay. I refuse to give my God given authority away to Jezebel. I renounce Ahab. I renounce sin and codependency. I don't know how I'm going to heal for this, but I know who is a healer. I know that God is a healer. I know that Jehovah Rapha is a healer. I know that he is a miracle worker, a promise keeper a light in the darkness i know a healer who heals the brokenhearted and binds up my wounds i will not stay there i will not stay in a demonic covenant i sent from the pits of hell to destroy me i will rise up against the abuse i will rise up above the abuse i will trust god to receive finances for me to leave i will trust god in his plan and his process and his provision over my life in the mighty name of jesus god i receive your provision god i bring my finances i bring my children i bring my marriage under your lordship in the mighty name of Jesus, God's word says that we are more than a conqueror and I believe him at his word. Yes, this is going to be, this is going to hurt, but God is a healer. I know it's going to be the fight of my life, but I'm coming out of this victorious. When I covenant with God and I covenant with you, I covenant with the most high, I covenant with the Holy Spirit, I covenant with Yeshua HaMashiach, and that means that I cannot lose. I cannot lose because I go from glory to glory when I'm in my God. That that means that I win. That means that I'm already victorious. That means that I'm already an overcomer. That means that kingdom marriage is my portion. My God given destiny is my portion. Hallelujah. So heavenly father, we thank you for this word. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice. Lord, let this word be sealed with the blood of Jesus for those who are in agreement. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done. We thank you for getting us out of these situations. We have hope, Lord, for those who are coming out because it's still Exodus season, heavenly father. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. And we come with great expectation, Lord, that chains have been broken here, that 
lives have been changed, Lord, and that situations have been rearranged because we met you. We met the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Heavenly Father. Lord, we anoint our homes with the blood that any demonic activity will pass over our homes, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for the bomb in Gilead, and we thank you, Lord. I thank you for everyone that is here, everyone that is here on YouTube, everyone that is here on TikTok. I thank you for Providence, Kanisha. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for everyone that is here, Heavenly Father. And I pray that their lives are blessed, that their lives are changed, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Y'all go on over to the other live stream, okay? Um, that's the interview with me and Solomon where we talk about um, Cat Williams. We talk about TB Joshua. We talk about a lot of things. We talk about narcissism and family, and it's premiering right now. So go on over there. If you go to my live streams, it should pop up. If you're not a subscriber, then you won't get the notifications. So turn those notifications on uh, and follow me there. All right. So let's continue to break those chains, and I will see you over on the other live stream. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much for being with me here. I hope y'all learned something. I know it's long, but that lets me know that y'all y'all won't listen. When people won't change for real, listen, a, a four hour message is nothing. Do you understand me? So thank y'all for being here. I love y'all to life. God bless you. And let's continue to break those chains. Bye bye.